Because you don't see that at a human level, right? Like we don't. Oh, inbreeding. Unless you're in certain uh, parts of the yeah, state. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> right, right, right. right. <laughs> certain parts of the Speaking state. Speaking of. Um, <laughs> 100 Podcast is brought to you by Deer Grow. Heck yeah, man. Dude, we put a lot of food in the ground every year, you know, seemingly more and more, and uh, we have a ton of fun with it during the off season. Uh, there's some struggles that come with it too, though, right? Obviously, the back of my truck is evidence, you know, right now, it's mm-hmm. a couple weeks after uh, I jackknifed, you know, a 4,800 pound uh, material spreader, you know, as I was coming down, and it's just it was too much weight for my truck there. But, you know, all those struggles aside, you know, dude, Deer Grill really has been a staple for our food plotting process uh, for several years now. Yes, we like to put lime and fertilizer on the plots, you know, if we can, but there are some that it's just we're not able to get to them or it's not feasible for us to get out of state with that stuff and so deer grow is kind of the, the quick and easy but still super effective option for us to be able to get the most out of those food plots that we can every year and i mean we're guilty of over analyzing things just like everyone else but that's the best part about deer grow is that it's going to create healthier soils which in turn makes better food plots and the fact is is we can simply spray plot start or plot till when we put the seed in the ground and then when that plant starts to grow we hit it with boost and we know that we walk away when we come back, it's going to be a great looking food plot. For anybody that's looking to try Deer Grow, if you use the code HUNTER15, that's H-U-N-T-R-1-5 at checkout for DeerGrow.com, and save 15% on any of your Deer Grow products. It's a great way to get started on this and just see what the results are for yourself. Better food plots, bigger deer. And we're back. Hey, you. On our podcast, episode 164, Nick is... On holiday leave still. Yeah. Talked to him just a minute ago. He's enjoying his... Uh, his vacay. Charlotte. South Carolina. Or North Carolina. South Carolina is where he Charleston. went. Charleston. Charleston. Started with a C. Yeah. Same S- thing. Swimmy, swammy, <laughs> swami. <laughs> Samsonite. One of those places that's like... Uh, probably like a pseudo getaway. It can't be that warm down there right now, right? No, still I don't think so. Wintry conditions. Yeah, they're they're getting this big storm that's coming through this week for everybody. I don't think they're going to get snow, but like rain and nastiness. Yeah. Yeah, so it is January 4th. That it is. 2024. On the other side of it, you know, I guess, you know, coming out of our holiday season here and before we rip too far here, I'll thank everybody for listening and Mm -hmm. uh, whether you're on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, or Spotify. We appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, It's a new year here for Jeremy. Is this our third year going on, right? So 21, 22... 23. This is going into year four. Going into four years, Jeremy and I have done this podcast yeah. and uh, have not missed a week, fortunately, which is a huge accomplishment That's for us. That's a huge accomplishment. If you know how scattered our schedules can be. So we're, we're proud of that and uh, we appreciate you guys sticking with us. Um, take a minute, if you will, subscribe to our, our channel. That does help us out. Mm-hmm. Continue to engage. We see the comments and stuff. You guys can write us directly on Instagram, you know, wherever. Mm-hmm. We're trying. We're trying to get back to you on that stuff. And so it's a uh, lot. I mean, um, oh, yeah. we try to communicate as much as we can. And especially if people like send us like private DMs and stuff. But um, we're trying. You know, I know several of these episodes that we've kind of had out the last few weeks have gotten a lot of attention. Um, it was funny. Uh, I don't know. It was over Christmas, I guess. We looked and like, we were, I don't know, in the top 25 of, like, all sports podcasts on Spotify. Yeah. Like, with the big, like, the big sports podcasts. Like, like actual the, sports podcasts. Like, the bar stools and of the world yeah. and stuff. And yeah. it's like, what are we doing here? <laughs> yeah. That's very cool. Yeah. So, it was cool. We appreciate the support. 2023 was an awesome year for us. Who else from the, like, hunting um, community is on meat that eater. Uh, so, Besides Meat Eater. So, they're, so they're Meat in Eater, the Bear Grease, you know, the Meat Eater podcast are up there. Uh, Remy was on there for yeah. a little while. Uh, okay. he's, I know he's got a pretty good one. Um, it's kind of it. Like you see some random ones come up. Like there was this new uh, ebb, ebb and flow sometimes. Yeah, yeah, there's like a new Tundra podcast that I think came out, and then it went back. Vortex is sometimes in there, and then they come back. Like it, it mm. ebbs and flows. I don't know if Seek One and, and Hunting Public are doing as much because I didn't see them on the list. Mm. Um. But yeah, and I mean, obviously it ebbs and flows with the, you know, the engagement around certain podcasts. So when we have things like what we'll talk about today, CJ's Buck, uh, Chris Brackett, Gary Alt, Lee Ellis, Seek One, like that momentum build is what shifts those chart numbers. And those stuff. individual podcasts, yeah. Yeah, so it's, uh, you know, and hopefully if you're listening to this, like some, you might just be finding this podcast for the first or second time. You got 160 some 
to listen to. Yeah, right. So um, I had somebody tell us they're like, uh, in fact, it was JD. She's like, I went back to listen to the first one. <laughs> like that's where she started. I was like, don't, don't, do, don't that. do that. <laughs> don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty. It was pretty raw. You remember what we talked about on the very first one? Our North Dakota hunt. The North Dakota one. Because we talked about it before. Yeah. Like, what are we going to talk about? We're still trying to like, what are we talking about? Here we are, 100 and whatever, 60 podcasts later, you know, we figured out it's, we don't even have to talk about what we're going to talk about. We just talk about it. Yeah. Just go in and do it. Yeah, it was fun. Well, we talked about the Leatherwood guys. They were like, well, what do we, you know, if we come into the studio, what do, I was like, I don't know. Just rabbit What hole. are we going to talk about? I'm like, what do you mean? Like, yeah. we're we, just going to talk. We just, <laughs> we just talk. Yeah, no. So I think it... It worked out well. So, <clears throat> we figure... Uh, I've been waiting for this one, dude. Yeah, for first your... podcast of the new year. We're going to kick it off just us. Time for just us to catch up. We've been so busy mm-hmm. chatting with guests and stuff, and that's you know obviously been a lot of fun. And we have a lot more um, on the docket, kind of getting ready to, to come up here in the yes. new year. But we, we needed some time for, for us, you know, some us time. Well, there's been a lot of... Uh, I mean, our DMs and stuff have been... Bl- uh, personal cell phones have been blowing up over CJ's Bach. Yeah, yeah. Um, which whether we dive right into this or not, the, the start, like that, it's one of the things that like people have kind of been waiting, like, all right, you know, wh- what are you guys are going to say? I know. Yeah. And transparently, we know as much as everybody else does. Yeah. Like, or don't know. Or yeah. don't know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's there. The statement came out from the Ohio DNR. Let's just dive right in. Here's what I think is really, um, as of right now, you know, CJ is... is this, is, this is the Alexander Buck. Yep. Everybody doesn't know what we're talking about. This was the, whatever he, he was, potential world record, certainly one of the biggest Ohio typical deer we had on the podcast, like, maybe a month ago. Six weeks. Six weeks ago. He shot it this past November. Yep. And, uh, you know, the podcast got a lot of attention because of the size of the deer, and mm-hmm. it was just a, such a really cool story and stuff. And so um, he's come under some scrutiny. The DNR has confiscated that rack and his, and his cape and stuff. And so he's c- currently under investigation to see if he got he had killed that deer legitimately, you know, by the yep. book. And, and so that's the situation we're talking about here. So, you know, uh, I guess there's a lot of stuff in the, on the internet that is just like random shit flying around. Right. And, um, y- you have talked to CJ yeah. uh, a few times since then, you know, I think that the, the couple things that we are clear on is, um, he did sell that buck to Keith, correct? Not clear. So not clear. Not clear. So when I asked CJ, about, and so I mean, for context, this was what was it a week ago? I talked to him. Yeah. Yeah. Two, so he, it was Christmas. It was Christmas. Like Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. Yeah. So like on a track phone, right? Mm-hmm. So they they took his phone for mm-hmm. sure. He may have gotten it back since since then, but I talked to him on yeah. a track phone because um, they confiscated his phone and he was under investigation. And and he basically told me in regards to selling that rack to to Keith. Um, he told me that he didn't sell it, um, but that he had some sort of arrangement with him that if Keith gave him what he was promising, which was a certain level of exposure mm-hmm. or contacts with, you know, X, Y, Z, yep. that there would be some sort of transaction. I don't know if that was an actual sale or I, I guess I don't want to misspeak on that. I, I don't sure. know exactly what happened, but when I asked him, I said, hey, did you sell that rack to Keith? Because like you keep saying, again, this is CJ, you know, I'm like, you know, you're sitting there telling me. And I'm, yeah, my whole, my whole attitude towards that conversation with CJ was like, dude, it took place after a lot of rumors were flying around, not just rumors, but like, um, the DNR had issued a statement saying, Hey, it's under investigation. We took this. We took it. Other people have reached out to us that claim to be close (coughs) to the case, Mm -hmm. um, and are basically, you know, saying, put, putting this evidence out there. So there's all these questions and you can just go read comments about people are like, well, What's the deal with all these nighttime pictures? If the buck was recovered mm-hmm. during the day, why why is that? Why did that? Why didn't the buck seem to have more rigor mortis? Okay, right? Yeah. Uh, what about the cell phone? Why you know? Yeah. Why forget your cell phone or how yeah, do you forget? Well, your so cell he phone? claimed here. You know, and you can listen back to that podcast. He claimed that he um, forgot his phone. He either forgot it or or left it at home on purpose. Yep. And then later on, he said made some reference to checking Google Maps and made some reference to FaceTiming. Yep. His buddy Corey. Corey, right? Yeah. And, um, so, so that raised questions about like what actually happened there. Mm-hmm. The, oh, what else was in question? Um, the, the location, it sounds like is what's being well, questioned. This, this, and I don't know what is exactly this DA, right? I mean, what, what has been on the internet is there's a, a district attorney yeah. for Clinton County or for the town. I, I, don't, I don't, I don't know, yeah. but there's this DA who had been hunting this property or hunting this deer and, 
you know, I've heard everything from it's been killed on his property. Oh, well, that's what it was. It was these trail camera pictures came yeah. out. So, so we were all like flabbergasted that there's no, there's no pictures, no, nothing coming out about this deer. We're like, how is that possible? Yeah. It's, it's not in today's society is what we came down to. Yeah. And so those pictures did eventually comes out, come out and like, I saw a video, a trail camera video of this buck on a camera in front of it. It was in October. Like, I mean, just massive giant, just in front of it probably was working a scrape or something yeah. Um, that somebody just sent me. And so these pictures, you know, this trail camera, you know, information and stuff, supposedly, I believe most, if not all of it, is supposedly from this DA's property, which is... Right outside of the town that CJ lives. Like, right yeah. on the edge of it. Yeah. And and so that, that seems to be maybe not formally in question either, but like, so I've heard numbers anywhere from like 12 to 20 miles is how far this property is that they're thinking he killed it on instead of his sisters, which again, is yet to be proven that, that he didn't kill it on his sisters. But so when I asked him about that, I was like, dude, where is this property? How far is this? And so he pulled it up on a map and and dropped a pin right there. He's like, that's where they think I, that's where they're saying I killed this deer. Yep. And as a crow flies, at least on Onyx, it says it's like 10 miles, 10 miles. Mm -hmm. So, whether that is the exact property or, you know, I don't know if our facts are straight on that necessarily. Well, it sounds like, because I know um, in the, at this point, I mean, you can look online. It's all hearsay at this point. But, you know, people have talked about this dump, right? That there's yeah, this dump, like a landfill, like a landfill yeah, <clears throat> a property that this deer had frequently, frequently been around and stuff. You could see it on the map. C- compared to where CJ's saying, this is where they said I killed it. Uh, here, there is the landfill. It's right there. Uh, what's weird is like nobody, and maybe they can't, nobody that we know who is like firsthand had pictures of this deer, had been hunting the deer in the area, has reached out to us or talked to us about it. It's all been second, third hand. Hey, I saw this on the internet. So, so and so sent this. Um, there's one guy that whatever. wrote us that, um, you know, it claims to have firsthand experience on it. I mean, you, you know who I'm talking about. I guess we'll protect yeah, his Yeah, but uh, we haven't seen any evidence We'll protect from his that. identity, you know, for now. But, yeah, I don't... Uh, right? I mean, you haven't seen any, like, direct evidence from him. Uh-uh. Uh, well, no, not not beyond what's available, basically, on social media. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, so all, all this stuff is out there. You know, there's all these claims that... Basically, the accusation is that he killed it, not where he said he killed it. And that's what they're trying to prove with all this information. And, and I mean, even supposedly there's like knives that have been recovered, like, uh, yeah, evidence, like a scene, a crime scene mm-hmm. on like on or near this DA's property. I don't know whether or not they can link that to CJ again. I don't know. I don't know if they'll do DNA testing between what was found there and the capes and that no were idea. the cape that was um, confiscated and stuff. So, so I mean, and that's when I talked to CJ, it was just, you know, Hey dude, like, let's just have a straight, a frank conversation about like, here's what's out there. Um, Cause we were out, out of the gate. People had said like the day it happened, they're like, CJ confessed. Yeah. He, he, he well, so here's what, that's here, what caught here, us off guard. Well, he's, what, he's, they're like, he's confessed. He's, he, you know, he got called out. DNR confiscated it and CJ just confessed. And we're like, what the hell? That claim was definitely made by somebody. So, I mean, here's how we found out. Like, um, so Mike Rex, we had on the podcast a few, a week, maybe a week before, two weeks before, um, it was right after CJ's pocket, maybe right after yeah. he had been out and met CJ and held the deer, a green scored it for him. You yep. know, Mike's really involved with like the Ohio big buck club and Correct. he's got several uh, records himself and stuff or entries anyways. And, um, <clears throat> so, Mike obviously being chairman of the Ohio wildlife, Ohio wildlife council, he's, he's very, uh, you know, up to date on it's, it's not that he'd be involved in the case or handling it firsthand, but I mean, he's, he's got the context to be informed about it. So somebody from the DNR or the Division of Wildlife, I'm not sure how the two are separated yep. or whatever, called him and said, hey, Mike, just want to give you a heads up. We confiscated this rack um, and the cape and stuff uh, because, you know, we have whatever. We have evidence. We're building a case to say that it was it was harvested illegally. Mm-hmm. Um, and they apparently told him that he had given a confession as well. And yeah. And so that came to me secondhand through Mike. So Mike then turn around and called me Mike's you know become a friend and, and yep. we, we talk with Mike and he um wanted to let us know to do us the same courtesy hey basically yeah I know you had him on the podcast like he got a lot of views just want to make you aware of like the situation here they they have taken the rack and they claim <laughs> and and they and apparently he gave a confession what a blow too when we heard that we're like wow. yeah wow you know crazy um and so you know I, th- I thanked Mike and, and and that was that so that's the only <clears throat> That's yeah. the only, you know, f- true kind of firsthand. That was right before Christmas because then CJ called us, I think, on Christmas Eve. I think it was Christmas Eve that he used his track phone to, to get a hold of us. Okay. 
um, right after that. And I think that was one of the first things you asked them was like, you know, we did heard, you confess? Yeah, yeah they said you confess. Like, no. Yeah, he says no. So like basically the consensus <laughs> of my conversation with CJ is like he, um, at least as of today, June 4th, I mean, I, it's been a week or so since I talked to him, but he's maintaining his story of innocence. He's, you know, he's saying yeah. that uh, every, everything is true. All the evidence that, and I'm not a prosecutor, right? I don't know. So just in, in my mind, I can run down through the evidence that would be damning to his case. I'm like, dude, listen, um, just from the things that are out on social media, like if, if there's a daylight picture of it, if that was taken. Which is, I was going to say, every picture, and I'm not defending him, every picture that I've seen has not been anywhere close to the date of harvest for CJ. Now, I'm sure they exist out there. What do you mean? The, from a trail camera stand. Are they not? No, everything I've seen is October. Okay. I haven't seen anything. I haven't seen anything stated or stamped. Now, I'm not saying it doesn't exist. Right. I'm just saying from the evidence that... So those trail camera pictures, and most of that is from October. And really, the only one that I've seen has been screenshots of a video of which in that video, it was clearly October on the timestamp. Okay. And I know, like, because of the way that deer was positioned, like, really close to the screen, those are also the screenshots I've seen as, like, trail camera pictures that have been floating around. They're all of, like, the same... Same shot. Yeah. So there's been rumors. You're talking of, about that nighttime. Yeah, exactly. Like it, it was actually a video and people have taken screenshots of it. Oh, okay. Because I end up getting the video on my phone. Okay. Um, so what do we know of? Like, if we can just compile. That's the, all I know. The right. picture evidence. You have that one picture. That's and a, I don't even know where it was from. It's a nighttime picture that apparently is a screenshot of a video. It was in October. I'm 100%. Gonna, I'm going to assume that was from the DA's property or a, a surrounding property. And if, if the, the DA's property is what we think it is it's a very small amount of woods there's a large por portion of borough property behind it that goes to that well, and, and that's where you know we can't possibly we don't know have the f the, the full uh or all the information in terms of like if, if family members own surrounding stuff or if you know what what that access actually is looking like but yeah but okay so so there's that picture you know at night in october um right. there is a daylight video that somebody sent to cj of the deer. Yeah, like chasing a doe through the field or something. And we don't know when that is, correct? We don't know. We don't know. No. So, um, somebody does, right? Yep. And then you have CJ's pictures, which most of them are harvest, pic you know, grip and grin pictures at night. They're like mm -hmm. in the back of a truck, mm -hmm. and those are all the ones we've seen. And there is there is one daylight picture that's just a picture of the buck laying in leaves. It's just like... During, the during daylight hours. Daylight hours. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Which CJ claims to have taken around... Uh, whatever it was, 11 or noon, the day after he shot it. So the day that they recovered it. So, and correct me if I'm wrong, and I haven't listened back to our podcast, so I don't know. Yeah. Was it like the then the next day in which the game warden went out to his sister's about, property? I think it was four or five days later. Four or five days later. Yep. Okay. They'd heard that he killed his big deer. And this is just, you know, CJ's account. So when they actually launched this investigation, I have no idea. Right. Um, uh, but apparently... A warden called, uh, and you remember he told us when he was here, got a hold of his mom first, I think it was his mom, and said, mm -hmm. hey, we heard CJ killed a big deer, can you send us a picture of it? I think she sent him a picture, or he sent him a picture or whatever, and he's yep. like, yep, that's a big deer, like, can I come out and look and see where he killed it? Yep. So I think that was several <laughs> yeah, days later. Yeah, and then later. he was like, sleeping, and yeah, I remember that. <clears throat> so yeah, I mean, the only data that we know, and this is where, because everybody thinks, I think, like, we have some inside track. I wish we did. Mm -mm. Um, well, other than having talked to CJ, like, I, I don't know if people CJ have heard. Is adamant I don't know that, if people know that he's he's claiming innocence. He's He is adamant that his story is true. Yeah. Um. If, and, and keep in mind, like, everything else seems pretty circumstantial at this point, right? Of, like, here's where the deer wow. was. We found these knives. Um, well, it's, your pictures are at night. They took his phone, so I assume they could do some sort of triangulation to his phone of location. Like, yeah. were you at this spot or are you at this spot? Yeah. He said, I think to you, when they do that, they'll figure out that I was at my sister's property. Yeah. So when I, you know, during that conversation, when I faced him with the evidence that I felt would be damning to his case, once, once they, mm. once they look into it, I'm like, dude, um, yeah, we were trying to compile the rumors and, and basically use those to ask him questions. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, and, and I'm, I'm just trying to find the truth for myself. I'm like, yeah. CJ, I just want to know. Like, if you lied to us, it's like, I'm not, I'm not going to be mad. Like, I'll be amazed. Like, I'm not, yeah. I like the fact that the balls that you came on here and <laughs> to everywhere to go to, go to North America, yeah, White Town, yeah, be on all these, life, all to these sell, you know, potentially yeah. whether he sold the rack or, or yeah. whatever to have gone through all these steps 
um, like having poached the deer would be, I would be impressed. That would be quite a, you know, a That's th- a set of stones, man. That'd be quite a thing, you know? But, um, so when I asked him, I was like, dude, here, you know, here's the thing. Like if they, they've already confiscated your phone, I assume they need some warrant to search it and, and look at like metadata and, and information yep. like that. But so if that, you know, the daylight picture, any pictures, you know, frankly, they should be able to like look at metadata on the picture and see where it was taken. I don't know if it provides exact, uh, I would assume it's pretty damn close coordinates or, or however that would work. But th- you know, that's, that's one thing. So wherever these pictures were taken, that's one thing. Mm-hmm. The, just the phone location in general, like I assume, you know, based on a SIM card or whatever, like, you know, the, the, the DNR should have some ability to like geo target where the phone was. Agree. Um, you know, either to confirm it was at his house or, at, you know, I don't know. The knife thing is the interesting Those are one interesting. to me. So I don't know. Again, I don't think the DNR has issued any kind of, I don't think they've given, provided any real insight to say, here's what we know. Like, it's, yeah. all they've said so far is, we've confiscated the rack, it's under investigation. Well, and it was a weird report, because <clears throat> I've been talking to everybody that basically asked me is, you know, the weird thing right now is that in the court of public opinion, right? When you hear the word poach, you think spotlight rifle. Like that that's just what comes into your brain. I don't does it say poach? I don't know. Well, I'm everybody is saying yeah, poach definitely. this deer. Definitely. So when when you hear that, and frankly, when I heard it, I'm like, damn it, this kid that's what I think, right? Yeah. In reality, and and what, what the DNR said is basically he didn't have legal written permission to hunt the property he killed it on. Mm-hmm. Now which could be interpreted a lot of different ways. Is like, that because he trespassed on somebody else's? Is it because, like, his sister didn't really own that property? Like, we don't know. Right. Like, we're making a lot of assumptions. That The assumption is he trespassed on somebody else's property, he did not have permission to do it, and killed it with a legal crossbow during legal shooting hours. Um, yeah. But in reality, maybe that's not it. Maybe he did kill it on his sister's place, and, like, he didn't have his whatever, his mother-in-law or whoever the other person was, a sister's mother-in-law was like, yeah, you can't hunt here. I don't know. Like, right. Well, and so I asked him, I was like, dude, so and, loose I said about it in, that. in regards to that, you know, what is the deal? Like, did you have written permission on your sister's place? And he said that he does. From he, his sister. He has written permission from his sister. Yeah. And so that's what's like, when you read the DNR release, it's like, couldn't they just say like, it's trespassing. Like the, I guess it's so weird is like him not having lawfully written permission. That's exactly what it said was like, what's that mean? Like he trespassed somewhere. He shot it on somebody else's ground. He didn't have permission to do it on the property. He did shoot. Like it was so vague of a release. I think all of us were kind of waiting for like this detailed release to come out. And then what came out was like nothing essentially. Nothing. Yeah, there was not a lot there. Yeah, well, and I assume there there is more to that. So they have like, to be building a case. Yeah, and like uh, by talking about it, we obviously don't want to interfere with anything, and we don't know, right? So it's like you no. know, nobody's called us from the DNR yet. We I did reach out to. Um, I do. Sorry, I do think that the things that we have been able to interpret, because this has been the thing that I mean, you know, the rumor mill gets started, and you don't, you don't want to fall into the same trap as. Uh, if even if this deer was not killed on his sister's property, it wasn't twenty miles away. At the most, it was like ten to twelve miles away. Why are you saying that? Because of where the location of everybody talking about where this deer was, it's ten to twelve miles from that property as the crow flies. Okay, it's not twenty. Okay, it, there's no possible way. I mean, if it's twenty, it's clear on the other edge of town, and now it's like. Does it matter though? I mean, what's the? the it does. I mean, because people were saying. Well, there's no way that deer. There's no way that deer can drop to, to can travel 20 miles in a night, which it could, but unlikely. It could, very unlikely. Could Cir- it, circumstantial could it travel? Though. Could I don't it travel I don't, 10. I don't think you can prove that. I think they can definitely travel 10. That's why I think it's a big deal. Regardless, though, I don't know that it's provable. Like I don't, I don't know. That no, it's all circumstantial. That, in in terms of like where the trail camera pictures are, are taken and like the distance it was reported to have traveled and stuff, like to me. That's circumstantial. Like, I guess there is a point where it's like beyond reasonability. Like, if they would say, "Hey, this these were fifty miles away," or it was another state. Part part I'd of be like, yeah. "Okay, yes." Part of the smoking gun is wh- who has. You still have la- to prove it's the same deer, though. Who, like, yeah, and I mean, which it clearly is from the picture. Who who has the last picture and when was it taken? Yeah, I'd love to know that. That, that is maybe not the smoking gun, but damn close. Agreed. Because if somebody has a picture the night before, ten miles away. Like hours before, 
Still doesn't prove it, though. Still my, doesn't prove it. In my it's opinion. It's still circumstantial. But mm-hmm. I, I I say that because I've seen, uh, I've even seen uh, Warren and Easton talking about unraised hunting. They're like, well, there's no way this deer traveled 20 miles. It wasn't 20 miles away. Like, from all of the evidence we that think. We're pretty, we, we're pretty sure, yeah. we as investigators have gathered, it surely seems like at the most, this deer was 10, maybe 12 miles away. Which I'm not saying is not far <laughs> because it's very far. But it wasn't 20. Yeah. I yeah, I think. I think so. I, I agree. It, it seems like it's around that 12 mile. Per the landfill, <laughs> per the borough property, per this quote DA. Like that is where all of those properties exist. 10 miles away. Um, Which I mean, dude, 10 miles sounds far. but It like, does. It's not. It's not. I've killed deer <clears throat> that I know for and a it's fact. And it's pretty open ag country where mm-hmm. he's at. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. The, the, the kind of... Again, speculation of if it was here and he says he shot it here, there's a giant like state park in between there with a lake and yeah, lake. pretty wooded, which that deer clearly would have to, again, it's he's not going as the crow flies. He's going to have to be on the ground mm-hmm. going around this stuff, which does make it maybe closer to 15 or 20 miles by the time he would have sure. got there. Sure. Somebody has a picture of this deer in November somewhere. You'd think so, yeah. If you don't, you've got no evidence besides knives and speculation, right? Well, well, well I mean, here's what I think. I think th- the things that could do them in would be, um, uh, cell acor- phone. According to I think both sides, there were knives recovered on this DA's property. There was two knives. CJ's is he's not obviously he's not saying they're my knives. He's saying they're not his. They're knives. Sa- he's saying they're not his. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know what else was found with the knives, if anything, if there was blood, if there was a gut pile, I have no idea. Um, if there was, like if there was DNA evidence, I would think that they would be able to match that with a cape that they confiscated from CJ. That would seem, I don't know how much that costs, but I would assume they can do it. Yeah, I would think so. Do you know what the level of accuracy in that is? I don't. Like, is it like human DNA? I assume it's pretty good. Right? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So, so you have the DNA evidence. If they if they have a murder weapon, basically, mm-hmm. right, and they have a scene, and they can match it to, yeah, the body, smoking gun, smoke. I mean, that's it. Yeah. On top <laughs> of you know this metadata, you know, on the pictures and any uh, geographical information they can obtain from the phone, that's that stuff seems like it would be pretty um, pretty damning. Like that would that would prove it. Yeah, and I would assume if they took his his phone, they have enough evidence to know where that phone was throughout that time period. Yeah, uh, it sounds like he got it back though. So like I don't, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure they probably got everything they needed maybe, from it. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. You know, the other thing is like uh, clearly at least one of his buddies is like has w- is involved in this thing, and like I haven't heard much about him or what he said or co- I think. CJ is talking about Corey. Oh yeah, you're his buddy. I guess they loaned him the crossbow. Well, there's there's a couple guys in several of the pictures. Are there? Yeah. Okay. And there's a couple pictures where there's just a guy Mm -hmm. in it. I mean, these guys obviously know part of the story, right? Well, did Heath help him recover? No. He th- no. He He wasn't in there. Yeah. So I think Corey's his buddy that was the most involved. Mm -hmm. He. Uh, loaned him the crossbow, loaned him the climber, and helped him recover the deer. Mm-hmm. Yes. Which, so, I mean, Corey seems to be a pretty critical witness here. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I don't know. I'm sure they've talked to him. I don't know if anything's, like, been released or it sounds like there's been, as far as, like, these confessions and stuff, like, I don't know. There's been some things thrown around until DNR. Is that Corey? The DNR. I don't know. I would assume it is. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming it is, you know, until, until the DNR releases a statement about what evidence is true, you know, because like there's two people in that one. All we have to go off of is like the, you know, what's on social media and stuff. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know who they are. And his fiance was in one. Well, and the kids are too. Cause when the other question I think you and I had when this all started coming up is like, okay, well where like that picture seems like it's at like his apartment or at his house. Yep. That's it's in the back of the truck bed yeah. there. Mm-hmm. The main one. These other ones in the field, like where are those at? That's it. 
Like, there's some kind of structure behind them. Mm -hmm. Like, is that the sister's property? I don't know. I didn't ask about this this uh, picture specifically, but he made mention of... Is that Corey's property? Like, they took it there to butcher it? At one point, it's hanging up, like, from a gambrel. Yeah. Yeah, that's what he, that's what he said. He's like, yeah, we hung it at one point, and then, you know, it's... It, what I don't like is like there's a lot of the speculation is like well if I killed a deer like that I would have done this oh yeah and, and I, it's like that's bullshit I mean I I understand all yeah. of that dude things happen like you you know dude if I and you gotta understand two hundred and thirty inch but yes I probably would take a bunch of pictures I would soak that shit in as much as possible and I'd be calling a lot of people for sure well and this kid I mean the kid's situation is different than a lot 100%. of people. I mean, he, he's, yeah. he's not well off, right? He lives he's got several kids with I think a few, a few different Yeah, uh, and he likes he likes hunting, but he's not us. Yeah, and so like to try to say like, well, if I come back like that, I would do it this way. It's mm -hmm. like it's just doesn't really apply. Not that we're saying that I mean, for sure the fact that you recovered at ten thirty and it doesn't seem like there's any daytime images, like, yeah, that is absolutely you weird. Know, weird. It's weird. Yeah. Well, and that's where I'm saying I would have taken daylight. I would have known. Sure. You know, but I. Well, and there is a daylight picture. You've seen it. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah. Super weird. I mean, th the fact is, hypothetically, if he were to shoot this thing on somebody else's property 10 plus miles away, he'd have to have somebody help him load that thing, drag it out, load it, mm -hmm. then get it to his sister's property unloaded i would assume i'll say this too here's why the knife thing is weird like <clears throat> he didn't strike me as stupid like he's not dumb clearly i mean if he if he is honest about what is happening he's standing his ground and he's i think he's handling it pretty well on the other side if he's guilty of it he's handling it freaking really well hmm. i mean because there's he's basically saying Prove it. Mm -hmm. There, he's not worried about anything at this point. The way it sounds, oh, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure he's worried, right? Like, he, you know, it, it, it's, I don't know. It's not I mean, a, he's talking to enough people that I don't think well, he's that worried. In the, in the sense that it's it's not a situation you want to find yourself in, no matter what. But I mean, he, yeah, he sounds confident with his. He's not worried about saying the wrong thing. Let me put it that way. I, talk, I, he, I, he I talked to him for on, an hour and fifteen minutes the other day. I mean, I I presented him with every piece of evidence that's out there on social media. I'm like, dude, I want to know. I was like, how yeah. do you respond? He to wouldn't this? have came on the podcast. He wouldn't have did North American Whitetail. He wouldn't have done outdoor life. He wouldn't have done any of those things if he thought somewhere his story was going to be shaky. Now people are saying well, that, that I don't know. I mean, he, he may have. He may have. Well, then he would not be smart. I mean, yeah, now that, you're, yeah, that would be a dumb thing to now do. Now you're putting it on record. <laughs> Definitely. Now you're putting it on record that people can easily pick this thing apart. And I mean, think about it. Like the fact is, is like if you, well, what I was going to say though, about him not being stupid, is like in regards to this, these knives, like, yeah. I mean, dude, if you kill a deer like that, you know, if you kill it off a property, you don't have permission on, you know, that you know, that's wrong. You, you, right. That's illegal. You, yes. He, he would know that. Um, you're going to be pretty stealthy about it. I don't think you would gut it right there. I don't think you would have knives laying around. Like, I'd, I'd get that thing off there. Get if I was in out. I'd get off there as fast as possible. Like, I wouldn't leave anything. I'd be like, yeah. we got to get this deer gone. Like, it's got to be off this property completely. Yeah, or classic poach. I cut the head off and leave the body. I don't know. Well. I mean, that's what, how many deer, I don't know. Like how how many deer have you seen poached in a field If you poach a deer like that, how quickly do you go into, cr like, criminal mode? Like, how quickly do you start thinking, well, I got to get rid of evidence? I would assume immediately. Immediately, right? Probably before. Fight or flight. The minute you kill that thing. Before you shoot. I would say before you shoot, you're already thinking about how, the, how am I. Because it, after. Immediately after. But not even. But if you don't even have it's to. It's all fun and games until you actually kill the thing. But dude, I don't think per what so far has been put out from Ohio DNR. I don't even think it matters if he killed it. The fact that he was hunting on a place that he didn't have. It absolutely does. I, I know what you're saying, but like there has to be. He was more, trespassing There has to hunting. be more to it than that. So it can't just be, yeah, you hunted without written permission. Correct. There's now an element of there was a, a deer that was killed illegally. And that to me is poaching. What's the difference though? What do you mean? What's the difference between hunting on a piece of property and trespassing and hunting on a piece of property and trespassing and killing a deer. I mean, I, not, you see, I'm not, I do, I do not exactly, but it would essentially be like murder and attempted murder. Right. Cause it's like the act of hunting on a property that's not yours is. Yeah. But that deer, that deer's not yours. Either. That's just trespassing. That's Correct. just trespassing. If you kill an animal, uh -huh. 
uh, while doing anything illegal. Right? I'd be interested to see where the law is on that. Like uh, what I, it actually I says. definitely would. Nick, can you just kidding. Come on, Nick. <laughs> hey Nick, when you get back, can we Google a definition of poaching? And I'm not I'm not trying to put like minimize it cuz I agree. I think it is the the taking of a deer illegally. We're also is not poaching. taking sides at all. Like <laughs> and I, I was straight up with CJ. I was like, dude, listen, I I hope you're not lying to me, right? I and know. I was like, if you know, I have no reason not to believe you other than the evidence that I've presented you with over this past hour long conversation and you've addressed mm -hmm. directly and to the evidence that would be damning, you have said, yeah, that would prove my case. That said, we have very little context or, you know, information about, uh, you know, the DNR building this case. We don't, we don't know. There, there's, there well, very well yeah. could be more information out there. I've heard things about surveillance footage and, and oh, yeah. all this and that. And so the, and we don't know. The and truth not ultimately gonna, will come out. They're not going to show us anything because it's, it's an active case that they're building. It just seems like, so from a law standpoint, right? Like, it's kind of a unique situation because most of the time when you hear about poaching bust, right, guy has killed multiple deer just, in a one just, buck Just for state. fun here, Jeremy, this is Wikipedia. So yep. poaching is the illegal hunting or capturing of wild animals. Illegal hunting or capturing of wild animals. So it's one and the same. Usually associated with land use rights. So hunting on somebody else's property. Mm -hmm. uh, poaching was once performed by blah, blah, blah. Set and hunting. But yeah, okay, so it's like old school stuff there. But so... The Hunter Podcast is brought to you by Hoyt Archery. Oh, dude, it's almost fall. You and I are both going to be in a tree stand with brand new Hoyt bows. We're going to be shooting the RX-7 carbon bow this year. I know Hoyt's also got the Venoms out, both equally smooth shooting, quiet bows. Heck yeah, man. We got a convert on our hands this year. We got a lifelong crossbow guy with a vertical bow in his hands for maybe the first time ever, a good friend of mine. And uh, we've got them all decked out with uh, the inline accessories uh, from the QAD integrated ultra rest uh, to the quiver. And also he's got the SL sidebar mount with a couple of stabilizers from Hoyt as well. So that's going to be a sick shooting bow. Yeah. And Hoyt's been cool enough that anyone listening to this can save 20% on any of the soft good apparels online using the code Hunter, H-U-N-T-R, no E. Uh, and if you want to look at the latest lineup of Hoyt bows, check out your local Hoyt dealer. Get serious, get Hoyt. I would assume Ohio's got its own law. And I say that because <clears throat> if you think about the way most poaching cases go down. So my neighbor was a formal, former wildlife investigator in Ohio. Like, that's what he did is he caught poachers. You see all these people getting arrested in Pennsylvania for using drones now? Oh, yeah. You're glad that wasn't you? <laughs> yeah. 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 Somebody's going to set a precedence, but yeah. The, it's not going to be me. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to be me. Um, the So when he would when he would catch poachers, right, after the investigation was done, most of these guys had 30 bucks in a freezer or something, right? Like, clearly, they were taking more than the bag limit. They were shooting them at night, whatever. Yeah. Poaching. Again, traditional, yeah. Speculation, CJ didn't do that. He killed one buck. It sounds like even if he did trespass, it was with a legal weapon during legal shooting hours, from what we hear. That's what it sounds like, yeah. So, what I guess I... Where where the law is written, and I'll be really interesting to see how they spin it, is what's the difference between him trespassing and hunting versus him trespassing and successfully hunting and killing it, killing that deer? I don't know if the law is written out enough to bust him harder than just trespassing. Oh, I'm sure it is. Yeah, you can't go onto somebody else's property and, and kill a deer. That deer's been killed. A can't go on somebody else's property and hunt. What's the difference? Yeah, it's two counts. Yeah, I mean, there's, I don't a, know there's a reason why they, uh, when they read off your sentence or whatever, they're like, on this case, yeah, guilty. On this case, guilty. So they very well may find... Um, uh, like, what? why would it be... So, yes, he trespassed. He was hunting and trespassing. That's a count he could be found guilty yep. of. But he killed the deer with legal weapon during legal hours. Yep. He's already been not charged for trespassing. Kill, it's, not, it's not their deer either. It's the state's. Right, it's yeah. But he killed it. It's with public legal. resource, so he would owe he would owe a fine basically to the state. It would it would be like a hey you owe us whatever it is twenty five thousand dollars or I've heard as much be, as a thousand dollars per inch, inch of antler. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see because I don't know. I've I've had this question to a lot of people because anytime I get somebody trespassing on my property, it's like okay, it's what? a game violation, a direct game violation to kill to kill a buck with legal. It's just like I, I think right. It's just like if I shot a deer over the fence. If I was hunting my property legally mm -hmm. during the season with the weapon I should yep. be, and I shot a deer over the fence, yep. I have 
and I don't I don't know how the law technically clarifies on trespassing. I don't. I think that. But would I can't be, just even if it's a that would be trespassing. But it's I, trespassing and I, it's poaching because I killed that deer. Like it's not my deer to kill. It's not on my property. I'll be interested to see what Ohio's law says for that. I bet it's not written out clear enough. It is. It has to be. What's preventing guys from you know just going out there during gun season and just like willy nilly shooting deer hundred yards, two hundred yards away on different properties and stuff? I think they do it anyways already, but they get hit with trespass. It's illegal. It's not trespassing. It, maybe it is. I don't know. I, I, that's where I don't know. And maybe that's why he, to me, he doesn't seem scared. I'd agree. He, he seems very confident in either the fact that his story is very true mm -hmm. and he's going to laugh at everybody that's saying it, or he knows it's just going to be trespassing at the end of the day and it's a slap on the wrist. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. There's no way it's just trespassing. I mean, th there has to be... Because I look at, like, remember when we talked about with Andrew Rieger about the albino buck? Yeah. That dude killed that in between the seasons. That was a clear poaching because he killed it out of season. Had he killed that deer within the season during normal shooting hours, doesn't matter. Like, there is no fine for him. Like, it, there isn't any issues there. The Game Commission does nothing. It's a legal act. No, because he killed it. Well, where did he kill it? I think he killed it on property he cannot. Okay, well then, yeah, that's fine. But if he killed it on property that he couldn't hunt, he could get hit with trespassing. I just... I think it's poaching, too. I think it's a it's a game violation. Be interesting to see what Definitely. that law That says. has to be... That's got to be one of the most common... You know, that that's murder for the game commission. Because most of the time when, <laughs> when poaching is defined, it's illegal weapon outside of season. It should be illegal harvest. Outside of shooting harvest. Illegal harvest. If you're if you're breaking the law... If you're breaking the law while in... in during the act of harvesting an animal, that animal has been poached, in mm -hmm. my opinion. And I believe in the eyes of the law. Yeah. In any capacity. Yeah. I, I mean, even if you have, like, uh, the, the wrong whatever. You know, you go out to a state where they don't allow Luminox or, like, expandable broadheads. And if you kill it with one of those, I believe that is a... I don't know if they would technically say that animal's been poached, but it's de it's definitely a game violation. It was illegally har it was harvested with illegal equipment mm -hmm. or or uh, wild trespassing or yeah yada yada. There's got to be some combination of how that gets prosecuted. Yeah, there's got to be a um, permission to hunt should be in writing. Ohio Ohio law requires a person to obtain written permission from a landowner. Or the landowner's agent before hunting on private lands. Which I know, a hunter who I'm doesn't. Right there, Jeremy. <clears throat> I just speculation, you know, and looking at the vulnerability of these laws and stuff, I can guarantee you that more than fifty percent of people hunting on other people's properties in Ohio don't don't have, don't have written permission. permission. Yeah, I, no way. I sent that to uh, a friend of mine that's a landowner in Ohio, and he's like, I didn't even know that was a thing. He's like, yeah. I have no idea. Yeah, I would have no idea. I mean, I don't. Yeah, and he allows people to hunt his property and stuff. He's like, I didn't even know. Interesting. <laughs> Yeah, it's um. Yeah, I'm just trying to look. Like, they I understand why it's there. You know, there's got to be some accountability so that people sure. can say, "Well, I I had permission, and like, we'll prove it." You know. Yeah, they just don't. Um, they don't have a really good. Ask a lawyer. That's what they would say, probably. Yeah, and I'm sure CJ has. They don't have a really clear thing on. Like, there are clear laws on, like, you can't trespass. You mm -hmm. can't shoot deer 30 minutes after sunset. Mm -hmm. You can't shoot deer 30 minutes or before sunset mm -hmm. or sunrise. Mm -hmm. Like, those are clear game violations. Sure. It seems like the assumption would be, like, you can't shoot a buck on my property. It's got to be in there. Well, that's trespassing. It's, it's just, is there something else on top of it? Yeah, there has to be. I don't know. It's interesting, for sure. I mean, I, truthfully, I don't, uh, I don't know what to think. Like, it's, I, I want it to be as simple as like, you know, he's giving me his word, in, you know, sure. you know, or, but obviously, there's two sides of this, right? Like, the, there's, they're building a, the, the, the state's going to prosecute. They're going to build a case, and it's probably going to have a lot of circumstantial evidence, per what we've heard. But I would assume that it's also got a few factual pieces of evidence that are going to be hard to, hmm. Hard to get out. So of. I don't know how this goes. Like, I I don't know what the next step is. Like, as far as... Um, yeah, the, the problem with these things is they take time. As much as we be like, okay, the iron's hot, 
Like, what's next? Let's find out. Yeah. I think it's going, like, again, if they've got to send off DNA on a knife to match a cape, and like, that could be months. I don't know. Sure. I don't know how long that takes. Sure. Um, I'm sure there's probably some statute of limitations. Like, they have X amount of time. The longer it goes, to- though, the more people talk, which is, you know, that will help yeah. bring some of the truth out. You know, whether that's, hey, uh, oh, I sure. don't know, this guy says he shot it on the 9th at 4 o'clock. I have it on camera at one o'clock on the ninth. Okay, that deer didn't go twelve miles. You know, where'd you have that picture? Those and again, but then is that circumstance like I heard people there it are people is. that are very much like, well, timestamps are timestamps. Like I screw them up on my camera all the time. I know. Well, and as far as like the location of the property and stuff, you know, that that comes down to, you know, one man's word versus another. It's like where was the camera? It's like, well, it, it was here. Which it's like transparently, CJ is at a huge disadvantage if a district attorney is involved. Yeah, like from a big picture level, if it is, I've obviously not talked to. I don't know this for a fact, but if it is like a, a district attorney that's involved, like it, it sucks for the case in general that there is a massive power imbalance on either side of it. Sure, um, that's neither of the parties' faults. It just it's it the is, way it is. It is what it is. Um, mm-hmm. so that's unfortunate. Um. Yeah, and clearly, uh, you know, <laughs> if you were hunting this deer and somebody like CJ killed that deer, you're going to be... There's motive. You're going to be pretty there's pissy. motive. Yeah, well, and that's why it's unfortunate. It's not just the power imbalance, but there, there's there's motive, right? And, and obviously, I'm not accusing. I'm just calling it for what it is. It's like the fact that this, the DA is the property that it, it supposedly got killed on, and he would have he would have reason to be upset if, he, if that deer got killed and he thought that it was there. And I don't know exactly what the relationship is there, but it seems like he would have a fairly clear path to prosecution. Like, absolutely, call up some game warden buddies and be like, "Hey, like, we got an issue." Yeah, you know, and, and it may not be misguided or mis. It, it may be a legitimate. Like, sure. hey, I've got a lot Any of buck, a lot of pictures of this buck. This like, deer. I've, I'm pretty sure it was poached or whatever. Yeah. How, however, that was brought up, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it's murky. We waters. don't know. Okay? We're just speculating. Like a lot of this is on, on the internet. Like you go out and, yeah. and find all this information. Well, we've been stewing on it. Like we, yeah. we you know, well, what? people want to know. They're like, Jared and Jeremy, tell us what happened. Well, we're like, people well, are coming to us because they're like, you guys, talk- what's the verdict? You had CJ on. Like, hey, we talked to him, or I saw this on the internet. Like that's, you know, I'm not out there searching for things on the internet. People are sending it to me, and they're like, yeah. hey, did you see this? Hey, did you see this? Hey, yeah. this guy's saying this. Yeah. And it's like, no, I didn't see it. But now that you say it, like, I, I get and a, it. A lot of people want to claim they're like, I know a guy on the inside. Like, I'm, I've, I have firsthand account. I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. well, tell me what you know, and I'll put it in a stock bank, and we'll, you know, we're, we're just assessing the information here. So I also like the uh, all the Monday morning quarterbacks who are like, oh, I knew it from the start. Yeah, and I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Well, you know, in response to that, it's like. The whole story was unbelievable. Like it the, was. We said it numerous times. It's like, dude, I don't understand how this happened to you. Yeah, I mean, the, the kid doesn't even own a weapon or a tree stand, and goes out and sits all day for two days and kills a world record on a thirty-acre, you know, at seven uh, yards. Yeah, yeah. The whole thing's unbelievable. It's like I, I can't and believe nobody it. knows That's, this deer exists. It's crazy. So, um, um, amidst that or amongst that, you know, people will look back and say, like, oh, well, you know, I knew something was off, or I should have. In what the know, whole the whole story was cares? off from the get go like that that doesn't happen to people but it clearly did happen to somebody yeah well and some people are like I could tell you had a weird feeling about it I was like dude the whole thing was crazy like I yeah. didn't I didn't have a weird feel I didn't have any reason not to believe him right yeah, in hindsight I mean, yeah there were some things that like maybe quite didn't add up but I mean dude things happen like you and I say wrong stuff all the time we're like I might say one thing that contradicts sure. the next thing I say it happens right in conversation I mean that's yeah. That's long form conversation. And sometimes they're indicative of truth, right? And maybe mm-hmm. there's something there. And sometimes they're not. Sometimes it's just uh, we say things. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, <clears throat> it just seems it it seems hard to tell those stories over and over again and not mess up some big details. And at least from what I saw, because I did read the North American Whitetail one. I read the Outdoor Life one, like, Fairly consistent. It's pretty much what we heard. <clears throat> well, and here's what it is. I mean, I the whole the whole rundown. I was like, dude, what happened? Like, ha- t- tell me again in, in in short order how you killed this deer. And uh, my my recount of it of what he told me was uh, this was again on our phone conversation mm-hmm. what, a week or two weeks ago. He said, he goes, yeah, I had written permission on my sisters. I had hunted it. I believe he said he had, I, I'd hunted it a full day before, whatever that would have been the eighth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
And then I went back in. His fiance dropped him in the, the morning of the ninth. Yep. And he sat all day. Mm-hmm. And he killed the thing around. Uh, forget what he said. He five, said like five four thirty five, something like that. Five five thirty. He didn't again said he didn't have a phone, so he didn't have a clock. Said he did, and again reiterated he did not have his phone. That's what he yep. told me. Uh, shot the thing at five or five thirty. Felt that it was a bad shot, maybe even not lethal. So he backed out. I don't, I don't remember what time it would have gotten dark, but said back. that his his girlfriend was waiting for him, or his fiance was waiting for him. Mm-hmm. I remember him saying that. Mm-hmm. His fiance was waiting for me. She said, "What took you so long?" Mm-hmm. To get out, so like now is she in on this thing? Like, it, I don't know. That's the only thing that it starts to get weird. Is like, man, you're roping in a lot of people who've got a lot to lose here. Yeah, like, this Corey guy. I mean, we don't know him from Adam, but like, Corey's in on this thing at this point. Like, dude's got a lot to lose as well. Well, so Corey lo- lo- loaned the weapon and stuff, and and that was his involvement up until this point. He's just a friend. Sure. Uh, how they coordinated the meetup, I I don't know. You know, maybe- but Corey was the one who helped them recover it. Right. Yeah, but I'm not there yet. This is still the, okay. the night of. I don't know how he hooked up with his fiance to. I don't know if that's like, hey, at dark, meet me here. If that's that's what he said. He okay. said she was waiting at the house mm-hmm. up front on the property at dark. Took him a while to get out because oh. he sat there. Oh, she was the one who. And, and I'm just saying from our podcast, she said, "What took you so long to shoot something?" And that's when he said, like, he cried mm-hmm. or whatever. And he claims that he left his. I think he said he left his phone on purpose, right? Because he's like. Again, this sounds cheesy, but I can understand. He's like, I just didn't, I didn't want it. I don't want to, I want to be hunting. Mm-hmm. I get it. Weird. I, I sure. haven't done that, right? But I get yeah. it. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> there's something to do with um, whatever. If, if he medicated himself that, or he has like anxiety medication, there's, mm-hmm. there's something there that I'm inclined to believe to just in some basically capacity. basically knocked his ass out. Basically said, yeah, he was out and, uh, Woke up the next morning at like eight, eight or nine and made contact with Corey, his buddy said, uh, I think he probably, yeah, he FaceTimed him that night is what he says. So that's, that was one question that people like, did you, so I, the I, case, the case should see him using his phone back in his town at his house at some time that night. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yep. Well, there was, yeah, I assume it was that night. And I think Corey told him that night, Hey, we're going to wait. We're going to, we'll go out tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So they do, they, mm-hmm. they make, they lead up at like nine or nine or 10. They go out to the property and they find it. Pretty close to where he killed it on the property mm-hmm. by the ponds. By the ponds, and he says that they sat there for a while, like like an hour or more, and just you know just lived in a moment, basically. Yep. Which I get. Like we'd have done the same thing if you and I went out and recovered a <laughs> yeah. two hundred and forty four inch gross non typical deer. Yeah, we'd probably sat there for a while too. Probably cracked a couple beers. Yeah, and he claims that during that time or towards the end of it or something, he took that daylight picture. So that, okay. so that daylight picture with the leaves and stuff was taken there by the ponds. Yep. Or, or on the property, at least. Then they loaded the deer up. So the, he, I think he said they drove the truck, like, all the way in there. Got it there. Do we know? I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, if they gutted it there. If not, it would have had been gutted wherever they took it to. Mm-hmm. And then... So uh, at this point, <laughs> let's say it's noon... One o'clock at About the latest. Noon, one o'clock. Yep, I think he said they took it back to. I believe his house. I could be wrong. It's either his or I think I think his. Maybe Corey's house, but I think his house. And at some point they hang it up, mm-hmm. and it's hung. And so at that point, I assume they would have no pictures, right? So I don't know if they plan to take pictures later or you know. Basically, the way he explained it, he's like, well, whether his fiance was working or yeah, there was people he wanted to celebrate with that weren't there, weren't available. So they just had it hanging. For a while, I think it was it was cold. I killed my deer on the night, so I remember it was cold overnight. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people did actually. In hindsight, we can talk mm-hmm. about this November 9th um, phenomena. But uh, apparently, most of those nighttime pictures were taken that night. Mm-hmm. So that'd be the night of the tenth. Tenth. So it, it had hung for a portion of the day, or they'd had it up and down, or I don't know. And then they took those nighttime pictures that night, and then I don't know exactly, but I would speculate that they. Caped it out that night, or that's when all hell kind of broke loose. After that, that's where I, you know, I kind of hmm. stopped following up. But that, but that's his account for it. That's, I mean, that's what he um, is claiming at this point, which is exactly pretty much what he told us the first time he was here. Yeah, and I mean the the he posted the pictures the eleventh on his social account. Okay. So, and I don't even know if he, I think his buddy Heath posted them first. I like posted them to some Kentucky. A Tennessee form. Tennessee thing. form or something. Yeah. 
So on the opposite side, and this is there's a lot more speculation. Like we're just, it's hearsay, and you know we're kind of hearing things, but it's like it sounds like the state or whoever's accusing them of harvesting this deer illegally is claiming that there's a lot of history of this deer on this DA's property, mm-hmm. and that CJ snuck onto the property through somebody else's property and killed it with a crossbow during legal hours, and then whatever well, you know whatever else happened after the fact there they're claiming that there was knives found on the scene mm-hmm. i don't know if there was uh like i said dna evidence yeah. or, or not yeah i would assume if there's knives there was some sort of gut pow or remnant gut pow there's talk supposedly of some sort of like gas station surveillance like he, that he was seen by purchasing ice or something would you ask them i think i i asked him he didn't have knowledge of it he didn't yeah. know he didn't know um yeah, I asked him, I said, did you buy ice? And he's like, I think I did. He's like, he's like, that was, that was the only weird thing that like, he just didn't have an exact answer for. I was like, mm. did you buy ice? And he's like, I'm pretty sure I did. I was like, where'd you buy it? He's like, I think I bought it from the speedway by my house, which would make sense. TBD. I, who knows? That could be mm-hmm. something that comes out to be true or not. I don't know. So, I mean, that's it. That seems like what they're trying to figure out. Is he just claiming he killed off his sister's property with written permission on the 9th, recovered on the 10th, took pictures that night, rest is history. Sounds like the speculation, if he didn't do that, if that's not the case, is that he snuck onto the DA's property, um, threw somebody else's property, killed it there. Which, can we stop there for a second? Like, I mean, let's assume that he did that. That's That's still pretty freaking lucky. I mean, what are the odds? Oh, insanely, of, insanely. What are the odds of you sneaking through somebody's property to another property that you probably haven't been on before to hunt to know how it sets up, what the wind's doing, anything, and you arrow? Impressive. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> it's like, like, it's like I, and I'm not but, trying to say put that. Put yourself it can't in that happen. situation. If you just had knowledge on a deer, if you're like, hey, I, somehow I know this deer shirt. Maybe I saw him. Sure. At night. And it's Ohio. You've got corn. I'm sure there's corn piles all over the damn place. Mm-hmm. And. So to speculate just for fun, if, if that's how it went and he went in there, assuming it was the first time, so, yes, went in there and hung a stand and killed the thing. Could, like, can you imagine? Could you just, can you imagine the, like the, I just don't, that thought process that would ensue after that. You're like to, to kill that deer legally and, and yeah, all by the book is w- once in a lifetime is amazing to go and do it. It le- like, on somebody else's property to, to to go in there for I'm assuming, like again a uh, day first it would be the the first time or whatever and to kill that thing it's like can you imagine the adrenaline rush like of breaking well, the line I mean, that, that capacity and killing a world record deer that's kind of the like there's obviously a lot of circumstantial evidence but from a speculation side assuming that he did do that like this is this is the state's case this is what he did the odds of it are very low, I feel like, in my opinion. To to cross somebody's property into another property to set up to then kill this deer during legal hours with a legal weapon, then to even get that deer back out across two properties, like, even if it's at night when you're hauling him out, like, it's just... It seems very low odds. Which is why when people think poaching, they think spotlight and rifle, because that's easy. Mm-hmm. There he is, pow, he's dead. Yeah. So that's where I'm well, so from, I'm hung up from, on that from there, part. He would have had to gone he would have had to go to his sister's property and recreate the Correct. scene. Exactly. Which is what they're saying he did. Yeah. That that's what's thrown that's the only part like you know, there's enough circumstantial evidence evidence there that I'm like, okay, they're gonna build a case here against CJ, and it's probably gonna be a pretty strong case. But when you have to recreate, okay, well, how did he do it? Cross this property into this property. He set up. He killed that deer. I mean, people have probably been hunting that deer for since the opening day of deer season. I would assume, mm-hmm. and nobody's killed him. So it's not like he's just in some park that yeah. you can walk up and yeah. hand feed him and shoot him. Yeah. So it's just like, how did this kid who doesn't even have a weapon in a tree stand walk in one day and kill this deer? <laughs> that that is where I'm hung up. It, it's the only part I'm hung it, up on. I get he, the circumstantial evidence of everything else. If he did do that, that's one of the most aggravating things for that landowner. Oh, I've been absolutely. hunting this deer. For, not only did he trespass, but he came and just did it. Yeah. <laughs> now, on the flip side, I could see like, hey, I'm driving by. It's November 9th. That buck is locked down with sure. a doe. He's really stupid along the road. I stick the crossbow out. I shoot him from my truck. Yeah. That seems more likely. Yeah. Of like how it could happen, then 
him crossing multiple properties to get back in there to then happen to stumble onto this deer and actually kill him. Yeah. Yeah. So if he did kill it, if they can prove that he killed it on another property, that raises all these other questions about how he did it and the sure. legality of, of the rest. I mean, well, so what would you have to do to like recreate that scene? Like if you killed that deer on another property and you're like, Oh shit, like I need to, I need to have this make sense. So you'd go, you'd go to your sister's property. Oh, dude, first, first of all, how do you get all, it off? First how do you of get all, it off the property? First of all, you, it's a big deer. Yeah, it's a yeah. How do you get it field dressed? It's two twenty probably. Yeah. Well, first of all, you don't got it. The first thing, I'm gonna be a criminal here for a minute. So yeah. it's like, if I kill that deer, panic sets in a bit. I got a bit of panic. I'm like, holy dude, shit, dude. This is this thing's gonna get out. I need yep. to. And if you made a bad shot. And if you made a bad so shot, that, let's stop there. For I a don't second. think they think they. Th I think they think he recovered it quickly. As a criminal, if I if this buck comes out, I'm trespassing. What's the biggest evidence of a kill? The gut pile. So the last thing I'm going to do is gut it. Yeah. On the property that I kill it. On. Absolutely. The last thing, and that's my best piece of evidence to put on the place where I'm going to say that I'm going to kill it. And prior to that, if I shoot a deer. On somebody else's property. There's already the, evidence that there's blood. And, and there's, it, it's a small, there's small par parcels there. Yeah. Like they're not yeah, big. Yeah. I shoot at you. I make a bad shot. I'm getting the f out of there fast. Right. Because now I just, I blew it. Right. I'm not going to trail that deer. Right. Right. Like if I've already trespassed multiple properties know. and now he's jumping other properties, am I going to start following that deer? You're hard, going to just be visible. Hard to know. It's very speculative. Like it's possible. Yeah. It's possible. I don't know. I don't know where the shot was. It's possible that, I mean, if it was ephemeral already hit, he might've heard the thing crash. He may have walked 20 yards and fell over that. I feel like that had to happen. If, mm -hmm. if we're recreating this mm -hmm. and he did shoot it where he said he shot it, mm -hmm. he had to see that deer walk over and crash. Otherwise I think from a criminal mindset, you're just get you, you're gone. Your chances are over. I'm just getting out of here. You're gone. Yep. So let's say he recovers it quickly, which I think Okay. Is the only thing that makes sense. You're not going to go back. Now you've got this two hundred. Well, you might, but you've got this two hundred and fifty pound live weight deer dead on somebody's property that you aren't supposed to be on. Mm -hmm. How you get it out? How do you get it out with one person? It's a great question. I mean, if it was if it was me to make it lighter, you got it. But that's the biggest evidence that's left behind. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. That's the last thing I would do is gut it. What would you do? I would either, I'd probably drag it off. If I, if I could get a machine in there. Uh, and you're a big dude. I'm, that's why I'm yeah, saying. Like true. you can move. A two, I couldn't, I, there's no way. I mean, I could get some movement, but I mean, that oh, thing dude. was this wide. You imagine the adrenaline coursing through your veins though. I mean, you're, you're lifting a, you're lifting a Subaru straight. off your toddler at that point. Ah. You're raging. I mean, I would assume you hunker down till dark though, right? You don't want to be dragging that thing through the woods during the daylight. Definitely dark. You, you're hunkered down. You're waiting for dark. Yep. So I'd, I'd probably recover the deer, and I would I'd call my buddy. I'd call Corey, and I'd say... That's exactly what you I'd do. I'd say, dude, I shot this buck. What are we going to do? Mm -hmm. And if I'm Corey... He's going to pull it up on Google Maps and say, you need to get it to this road, and I can pick you up. I, yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm not thinking stage anything yet. I'm just thinking, how get do we get... Get it the fuck get out, out of there. Get it off there. <laughs> I'd probably... <laughs> They're assuming there's no chance of getting machine. We in might there. make a movie about this. It's very possible. Yeah, making making a poacher. <laughs> That's what it's called. And uh, assuming there's no way to get a machine in there, like if there's houses nearby or if I could be seen. And again, I'm just looking at what we've seen from the proposed area. There's no way. I mean, dude, people okay. would hear that machine go in and been like, "What the fuck?" Okay. So if I can't get a machine in there, I'm gonna physically drag it either and by your, myself or your with buddy's my buddy. Helping, yeah, I bet. Either with either by myself or with my buddy. To the closest road that we can pick it up on, und yep. undetected. Yeah. Which is doable. I mean, if you can drag Very it somewhere doable. and then, like, hide in a ditch, like, you know, you can hide something like that. You surely, if you didn't see that thing fall, you surely didn't leave that night and then try to come back the next day. There's no way. There is a way. That's I, a bold move, Cotton. Yeah, well, whether it was the next day or, like, late at night. Yeah. You know, late at but night. But now you got lights and stuff because you're going to have to be trailing. Mm -hmm. Having not been to the scene, I, so I don't know exactly. So, I mean... Mm -hmm. I, you know the mission the mission is we gotta get this deer out of here we gotta get this thing off here i'm not leaving any any evidence in fact i'd go back and you know any blood that that's the problem with dragging it the reason i would prefer a machine is like i don't want to drag this thing and leave more evidence than we have well to. and let's be honest at this point did you really hump in a climber and climb a tree 
No way. You were on the ground with a crossbow. Supposedly, there's climber marks on a tree. I, oh, really? Yeah, this is something that uh, wow. I think is out there. Like, I think that, uh, but I mean, who knows? That's. I mean, I would assume, listen, in my younger day, I did some my fair share of trespassing in and around Pittsburgh. You mm-hmm. had to. Right. Like, I wasn't climbing anything. I was stealthy. Only, most of the time, I was just putting a drive on. I wasn't, I didn't carry a weapon anyways. I mean, again, it's, it's just like a, it's a piece. It's a piece of information that I don't know. That's a bold move to, to bring a climber in and pump up. Because if somebody comes, you're screwed. There ain't no taking off. Yeah. I mean, dude, a lot of people hunt on people on properties they're not supposed to. And and what do they say? You know, oh, I thought this was a so-and-so property. Sure. You know, I was mistaken about the property lines. Oh, I have permission from so-and-so. Yeah. yeah today's hunting, stress, today's hunting stress the property, property is a lot different than 20 the years ago. Hunting the property is one thing. I mean, I've come across hunters on our property. Yeah, and, me too. And... You know, that's what they'll say. You know, oh, I had permission from so and so, or this and that, and it's. I thought it was this, or it's trespassing yeah. is is all it is, and whether the story is legit or not, it's like you know, yeah, you'll never know. And I would assume that most people, like I don't, I've never, tr- I've never, um, what do I want to say? I've never uh, turned in anyone never, for trespassing. Ever? Like I've never yeah. reported them to the police. I've never pressed charges. That's what I was looking for. Mm-hmm. I've never pressed charges. It, I just kick them off and be like, "Hey, I don't want to see you back here." Mm-hmm. Yeah. Take maybe get their ID or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But I, I would assume that I mean, trespassing today is a lot different than it was when I was growing up. Like, you know, if you trespass, people would be like, "Hey, just don't, don't be back here." Right. Some of them wouldn't even care. They're just like, "Oh, okay." Like, I, you're not hunting. I'm like, "No, I'm just walking through." Hard to say, you know. So yeah, if whatever the DA had been walking back to his hunting property and come across CJ in a tree, and he'd have been like, "Hey, you can't be here. What are you doing?" Um. Yeah, you know he would have probably just kicked him. He might have pressed charges. It would have been I don't know what the trespass. That's why I looked is. like when they were talking about that landfill. There's a big piece of borough property behind the DAs that's very thick, and like I would assume of all the properties around Joe Burrow, the yeah Joe Burrow, <laughs> the the borough of whatever town he's in, mm-hmm. that would probably be the the least likely to run into someone like somebody may be hunting their private land, but nobody's hunting that borough property, mm-hmm. which is probably why that deer was living on there. Mm-hmm. If he was, I mean, dude, it happens. Like we want to act like people, you know, are always hunting on their property and stuff. Like dude, a, lar- <sighs> a large percentage of people hunt properties today because of, you know, a lot of our conversations on this podcast are about lock, last, uh, loss of access and stuff. And so there's a lot of guys today. I get three to five trespassers on my properties a year. Most of the time, I don't ever get to confront them. Well, they're just on and there's a lot and of gone. properties that don't get patrolled and stuff. And dude, I walked Absolutely. I walked two properties yesterday. Um, yeah, you know, with the owner, and we're walking around. I'm like, "There's a tree stand." He's like, "Hmm, yeah, interesting." You yeah. know, they don't know. They don't know. Most they don't they, care. You know, if you don't have an, a hunting interest on the property, then like you don't pay attention. Usually, to it. you don't pay attention. You know, it's or if exactly it's a, it's a property you don't go to. I mean, dude, around here, there's a lot of oil and gas company, energy companies that own thousands and thousands I would of acres never that know, they've man. never been on. They've never been there. Even my properties, if I didn't have cell cams, my, my cell cams catch my po- my trespassers. It's very possible that people hunt on our property in Ohio that I don't know about. Sure, it's possible. You know, I mean, we do our very best to patrol, and I run cameras on. You it's know, a big air, property, it's access a lot properties. Of land. There's, it makes sense. It's hard to patrol. It's yeah. a lot of access. Points. You hear stuff like you know. Over time, you find you know you you, you know somebody will say, "Oh, I said truck parked off so and so," or you know you might sure f- find some evidence of something, but it's like yeah, you, you can uh, only do so much, you know. Yeah, yeah, and that's where it's like this is again trying to put all these pieces together. It's like man. That's a, it's a tough, it's a tough case to build when you say, okay, if this is where it was, how'd he do it? And then you explain that like he, tr- you know, he trespassed across two properties. He pumped up in a random tree. This deer came through and he shot it in the femoral. It somehow caught the femoral and died. He got it out of there and nobody, nobody saw him. Okay. <clears throat> so let's be criminals again. So. Okay. If called your buddy, you got it to the road. We got it to the road, we got it to the truck. I'm, whether I have been doing it as we're dragging it out or if I go back, I'm going to try to cover it up as best as I can. I'm going to, I'm going to put leaves over the drag trail. I'm going to mm-hmm. like try to hide any, anything sure. that was left behind. Yep. Yeah. Cause I mean, if you're dragging a big deer, there will be hair left behind. We've all seen it where a deer has been drug out and you're like, look at the hair right here. Plenty like somebody of drug a deer right mm-hmm. out. Yeah. And so I'm going to do what I can to clean that up, and I'm going to I'm going to get off the property as quickly as I can. I'm going to go- see any drag marks on that deer when it was hanging. I don't know if I see the picture or not. 
There's uh, that one where it's hanging from the back. Pull that up, and I'm going to pee real quick. Okay. The Hunter Podcast is brought to you by Muddy. Man, Jared, we probably have been using Muddy products for at least 10 years now. It's a long time, dude. It's been a long time. And I can remember when it was simply just safety harnesses and camera arms of all things. And, you know, that's evolved to where you and I both have a bunch of Muddy box blinds as well. I would say a bunch. But, yeah, they, they've come a long way. And certainly the box blinds are, are huge. Shot that buck of your shoulder out of a Muddy box blind a couple of years ago. The harness and, and all of the other safety accessories really are, are a major component of, of what Muddy offers for me. Um, you know, we've had some injuries in the past, you know, some, some tree stand accidents. This, this is all back before we were using, uh, you know, frankly, harnesses, mm -hmm. uh, the lineman's belt while we're hanging stuff, and the safe lines. I have those in every single one of, uh, you know, our fixed tree stands now. And uh, so we really have made safety a priority. Uh, that, that's a big deal for us. And, uh, you know, Muddy has everything we need for that. Yeah, and I think uh, the cool thing about Muddy is anyone listening to the Hunter podcast can save 20% using the code HUNTER20. That's H-U-N-T-R-2-0. Uh, anything that you can see on the Muddy Outdoors store online, use that code, save yourself 20% for this hunting season. Go Muddy. I I'm going to circle back to it. So what, after we've gotten the deer off the property, we're gonna, I'm gonna, me and Corey are going to go back and convene. What are yep. we going to do? Yep. And, we have it in the truck. <laughs> in the meantime, you, you pulled this up here. Yeah, so there, the, the other part of, we didn't talk about this, but part of the evidence that first came out, I think that, really kind of maybe started the snowball on the public side was somebody said that their husband had purchased um, a, a shed or a set of sheds from some old guy that was like 15 to 20 miles from where, uh, where CJ said he shot the buck. And clearly it looked like it was from this year. Him. And it was years ago. Yeah. What, well, what was like interesting four, four it was like ago, four years gone. ago. And I mean, this year is, giant four years ago it, it makes this deer ancient um mammoth yeah i mean he'd be at least a probably a five-year-old deer with the sheds yeah so he's like eight or nine should so be nine yeah nine or ten <laughs> which is crazy to think it's crazy unless he's living in places that he doesn't get hunted definitely possible highly improbable but i mean you've shot 10 year old bucks it, I have. it happens i have okay <clears throat> so this is uh ohio white-tailed deer and then in parentheses. Yeah, this is one of these things that somebody sent me and they said, read this. Big box. So this is a, a post by yep. Matthew McGee. Yep. Uh, a more in-depth analysis of the Alexander, Alexander Buck sheds from Ohio. These sheds are four years before the deer was killed. Uh, they were found 15 to 20 miles from where CJ got the buck. Assuming they're referencing like his, his sister's, sister's property. farm. Yep. The deer was known for traveling and has been documented almost 20 miles from where it was killed. I mean, makes sense. That's where the sheds were found. So these are from the same approximate location and same time frame as the deer. Both the buck and sheds gross score over 230, assuming, assuming the same 27-inch spread, uh, and carries a typical frame well over 200 inches. And... Uh, in length and paddle out at the ends of the beams. The mass on the sheds is a little less, but still extremely massive with six inch bases and over 45 total, uh, total mass. And the deer has 50 inches and the deer killed has over 50, 50 inches, inches of total mass, mm -hmm. uh, matching 13 inch G threes and a short G two on the right side, very similar veining and similar little nubs on the bottom side of the, Okay, so blah, blah, blah. Just basically all this stuff. It's interesting that he says the deer was known for traveling. Like, what What does that mean? Uh-huh. I don't know. Okay. Okay. The, the sheds were still lighter in color. Although, also, when I got the sheds, I had a local taxidermist add color to the sheds, but I wasn't happy with the result, so I stripped it back off, leaving them with the color you see now. With all these things considered, it's impossible for me to believe that this isn't the same buck CJ harvested this season. Doubters may doubt it, doubt, but I have a very solid arguments on the case. Okay, so yeah, just a, he's uh, saying that he found he got those fifteen or twenty miles away, and that's the same. But, but so that was what kind of started to raise the red flag of like, okay, well, if that's true, did CJ really kill this buck fifteen to twenty miles away? Okay. I'd agree. I mean, it's it's an identical look. I mean, you guys can yeah. see this. You can go and on it, and Matthew Gee's Facebook page. And here. there's the one of those pictures is the video, screenshot video of that deer in the field 
mm-hmm. that we had seen in the, daylight in like a cornfield bumping a doe. The year that he killed it or yes. unconfirmed for sure? Well, unconfirmed. Because clearly now that we know this, looks like this, deer's, this deer's looked the same for <sighs> four years, basically. What a giant. Right? <clears throat> I mean, this this deer's frame has not changed in four. Well, or at least he looks the same or a little bit bigger now than he did four years ago. Right. Which, that's what happens usually. I mean. <laughs> Interesting, <laughs> though. To see. So, I'd agree. I would say those, I don't think it can be proved, but that, there's a high probability that those are that deer sheds. And he can confirm that those were found. I mean, that's a pretty big range. 15 to 20 miles from where it was killed. Which yeah, which I don't. Yeah. Is, is possible. I mean, that. Yeah. That'll happen. Yeah. So it's interesting. So anyways. So we got it back in the truck. We got right? it back in the we truck. We got it off there. We're, you know. Now it's like. We got to figure this out. Holy shit. Dude, what are we going to do? Like if. if, if but it's going to be sticking out of the truck. It's a giant deer. Like. Yeah. Maybe he's got a tonneau cover or something. Huh? Maybe a tarp. <laughs> a tarp. Tarp. <laughs> little tarp action. Tarp. So it's, I assume it's in the back of a truck and, uh-huh. and we're like, hey, dude, we got to. <clears throat> we got to. We got to make something legit. This has to be legit. Like if you're going to. If we're going to tell anybody about this deer, like it. it we need to have a story. Mm-hmm. So you'd have to come up with some coup to say, well, dude, I've got permission on my sisters. It's right there. Like it's far, but it's, it's believable. Like it's, um, that's a lot to process right there. You know, deer travel 10 miles, deer travel to, well, you're, you're going to start looking you're like, what's, what, what's, how can I? Cause I, I would say that that, that's very geocentric. Like if somebody here said, Hey, like, Say one of the bucks I had on my property, and they kill. They're like, "Yeah, I killed this thing ten miles away." I'd be like, "Bullshit! There's no way a deer's not going ten miles here." What's your next best option? So, I mean, you and I are sitting in a truck, and I'm like, "Dude, I just killed this 240 inch buck." Like, <clears throat> what are we gonna tell people? I would start thinking about where can I hunt legally close to where I'm at right now. Where can you hunt? And then you're gonna say that you killed it later than when you actually killed it. Yep. Okay. I'm gonna or I'm gonna get permission from somebody and I'm going to plan it mm-hmm. and say, yeah, I killed it there. I don't know. That looks kind of suspicious. So what are we going to do? We're going to get permission and then say we killed it the first day we were on there. Not necessarily. Maybe. I mean, I'm sure people do that. I'm going to at least look and say, where's the closest place? Is, is there anywhere close that I could hunt legally? For instance, and I don't know if you could. Are you in the truck with me right now? I'm in the truck with you. That state park is a hell of a lot closer than a sister's place. Can it be hunted there? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. We would Google. It. I'd find out. Yeah, can you? Hunt I don't that? have my phone. You have my. You have your phone. Whatever. Who killed it? <laughs> okay. So you see what I'm saying, though. I'm trying to find the most realistic place that I could have killed it. Shit. If what? it was one of us, you would have been the one that killed it, just because it, it'd be your <laughs> it'd be your luck. <laughs> First day in. First day in. First day in. So yeah, I would say, where's the closest place I could kill this thing? Mm-hmm. My plan B would be I hit it with my fucking truck. Okay. And I just. I hit it with my truck. <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to do? Just hang it from a rope and then Well, just be like, I'll call it? the game warden and be like, yeah, I hit it with my truck, man. Like, I don't yeah, but know. clearly there's no, I mean, they're going to find that out pretty quick. Just run over it. Yeah. There's going to be damage to your vehicle. Yep. Like you'd have to, we'd have to stage it. We'd have to hit it. You mm-hmm. have to hang it from a rope and run into it somewhere that can't that's be. That's a plan B. That can't be found. <laughs> that's, what, that's a plan B. I'm um, with you. So, I mean, if, yeah, if you, I would agree. I said, well, okay. What's where? the closest place around? Where, yeah, where can we hunt? Where can, is there, is there public access that we can get on? And, yeah. and that would obviously be the go-to. Yeah. I mean, coincidentally, <laughs> I have pins for, for these, uh, for these areas, uh, on my Onyx. Not cause I was there. Um, so I, I see a lot of city property around, which I assume you can't hunt, mm-hmm. right? I don't know. Um, I see a state park mm-hmm. Which, that is close. I also see what's this? I see a nature preserve, which, which I assume you can't, can't hunt. Be hunted, yeah. Um, both of which are, if you told me that he shot him on one of those two, I would a hundred percent believe. I would say, yep, no, no doubt, man. Like that's that's a hop, skip, and a jump. So, let me see if you can. I think you. I think you can hunt that. Really? Yep. I think you can hunt that state park. Wow. Yep. A valid hunting license is required. Hunting is permitted. So there you go. That's what we would do. We'd be like, holy shit, dude, you can can hunt us. You can hunt us. That's public. That's close. Hunting is permitted in designated areas 
during scheduled hunting seasons. I'm looking here. Close the hunting. Open to hunting trapping. There are several areas that are open to it, and that would put me within three miles of the suspected area. So we got we got to go straight there. Let's go straight there, mm-hmm. and we'll get it there. Yep. And we'll. You want to leave as big of an evidence pile as possible in the place that you said you killed it. So I'd be looking for access points to yep. that state park. Yep. You know, in places that would make sense. So it's like, how can I, how can I go in here? I see multiple roads going through several of these areas. There's a really secluded back slough area that is, I mean, here, I'll tell you right now. If I would be at the road to where the 3.5 miles Done. from the suggested area that this deer <laughs> did live in. That's where we need to be then. And it's oh, it's across straight open field, three and a half miles straight open field. So that's where we need to go. Yep. You dump it out. You got it. Well, you make as big of it. Getting in there is like it's easier said than done. It's like wh- where are we taking this deer to and how are we getting it there without leaving tire tracks or dropping blood or dragging a trail all the way in there? It doesn't matter, I think. I think once you get to the, there's a road that gets in there, I think you flop the tailgate down and anything, if you're dragging it back and forth, like you're, all you're doing, nobody's going to be able, that's super su- subjective. I, I, you can tell what way they're dragging it. I think you'd be, uh, well, I drag it in, I drag it back out. Yeah, it's true. Drag it in, drag it out. Okay. So we've pulled it out of the truck, drag it in somewhere. Mm-hmm. Got it. Got it. Do we, are we going to hang our tree somewhere? Like, no, we're going to say we pulled it. Yeah. We're just gonna look it. for a tree. We're going to look for a tree. We're going to say, yep. Shot okay. it right there. Yep. Yep. Drag it out. We're going to hang the tree. We're going to hang the tree stand, I bet. Yeah, or put I'm it right, gonna, it right I'm going to be the, the one telling you, dude, we need to hang the tree stand. Like, we need to recreate. We need, to, tr- we need to trim some limbs. Mm-hmm. Yep. We need to get down. We need to gut it. We need to drag it out of here. Mm-hmm. You load it in the truck, and then I start making calls right away so people know that I killed this thing because that's what anybody's going to do. First thing anybody's going to do when you find it. Yeah, I would have already called you, and I would have, or you would have called me and said, I shut this button. So that, that calls on, yeah, because the call log is, the call log is there. That's, yeah. that's evidence. And, and again, because it's public, and what, you're doing this all the night up. There is no, let me go home oh, no. and then come back. It's a long night. It's a long night. Yep. Of which you probably do stop for ice or something at a gas station. Mm-hmm. On the way home. Yeah. I mean, you're, well, I, we at don't, that point, we you, don't ever use ice. So, I mean, unless it's like hot. Hot. At that point, you want to be visible. You want people to know that you killed this thing. You want to be visible by people. You want to be making phone calls. You want to be on podcasts and go on. You want to be on radars. <laughs> yep. Ugh. But I mean, based on that being open public, if I were to have poached it, that's where we would stage it. A hundred percent. Yeah, that makes more sense than going back to your sister's place, unless for some reason you felt like you had more privacy to be able to get in there. Sure. Which I could see, but from a believability standpoint. 10 miles is a tough pill to swallow. Three and a half miles across open ag field, I don't even blink an eye. Sure. I could I could basically see, because it's flat, I could see right across yeah, to right where there. he... Killed, killed right over there. Yep. And I guarantee, I bet that deer has traveled to that area. Probably. Probably. We're, and we're assuming that you can hunt there. I mean, that's... I did. I looked at the map. For sure can. For yeah. sure can. Mm-hmm. As long as it's during legal seasons. Well, I mean, if anything, I would say that leans in favor of CJ. Like, either he... I do think that the, your privacy quote, though, makes a lot of sense. If I can get back in there, nobody's back in there, privacy set up and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. The 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 other thing that, um, and again, <laughs> maybe just a fucking like rock bag of stones on this kid, is like to take a warden out even days later. That's ballsy. You have to. They called. He asked to come out. I know. What are you going to say? No. But I mean, you've now taken them back out to a scene that you're trying to recreate and I mean did you I would assume you had to pre-plan this story and visualize this thing because when he comes out you're not going to be hesitating and saying well maybe it was this tree or this tree I was in you're going to be saying I was in that tree he walked through here he ran over here this is where he died yeah and it sounds like that's how it went I mean I we haven't talked to the warden, but it sounds like he was satisfied with that encounter. That's what it sounded like. Per, you know, or, or or maybe he detected red flags, and that's what set it off, and he took it back. Maybe. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, I mean, because even, I mean, it doesn't matter if it rains or whatever. 
if a deer dies in an area and I got it there, four days later, if I come back, I can tell somebody got it and killed a deer here. So here's another thing that uh, doesn't look good for CJ. It's just weird circumstantial. Is like the that property was brush hogged. Uh, I, I, really? I want to say it was before the game warden got out there. Who brush hogged it? His a relative his sister like so if you remember him telling us like they were in the process yep. of like moving into that house yep i remember that so it sounds like as a part of that they went and brush hogged the property shortly after he killed it you know what also it was interesting small detail is that he we asked about cameras and obviously he was like yeah no i didn't run any nobody knew anything he's like but my brother-in-law is running cameras on that property now mm -hmm. too like i mean i'm not saying that he he wouldn't, but like, I mean, you're basically lying to everybody, everybody that's around you, friends, sisters, right. Brother. brother -in -law. In -law. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, sure. Dude, put a camera out now. Who knows what else is out there? Right. Interesting. Definitely. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. It's, uh, obviously we're here just like speculating because this is what everybody's been doing online. Um, what do you think? Just what do you think? I think that... I think that he did not kill it on that property. I think he probably... On sister's property. Correct. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I think he probably killed it on the city property behind the district attorney's property. Mm -hmm. Across from the landfill. Because it's thick, it's gnarly, and it's less likely people would come in there or see him or whatever. Um, it's also not like a direct trespass. Like, yeah, you could justify in your mind, like, <clears throat> it's not, I'm not hunting the DA's property. I'm hunting, like, this city property. Yeah, the city property, basically. Yeah. I also think that it's because of the odds of killing this deer in that one time sit, I think he probably saw it locked on with a doe. Mm hmm. And that's how he killed it. Mm -hmm. oh, and I would sense. assume he made a piss poor shot probably from the road. From the road. Mm hmm Is that a highway or something right nope, there? Nope, just, just a back back road. See, I don't think he would have made a shot off the road. I think he would have at least, well, I mean, it's possible. Or, you know, walking it. But, like, I, I would say yeah. he was on the ground. That buck was with a doe, and he made a, made a long crossbow shot on it. Now. And then recovered it. That night, I would assume pictures. that this is this is where it comes into question. Is I would assume that he hit that femoral artery and that deer surprisingly went down fast, mm -hmm. because I think if you would have put it in the ass and that deer just ran away, I don't think you go looking for it. I think he's smarter than that. Yeah. So I would assume that that deer went down really fast. Yeah. And then because of the way that sits, it call my buddy up. We walk right down in the stick stuff. We drag him right out to the road into the truck and we're gone. Oh. That Makes would sense. be my guess. And I don't, I hate judging CJ like that. It's just, there's too much circumstantial of it. Now, what I don't know, and I wish this would be big piece of evidence is who's got a picture of this deer in November up where I'm talking about, mm -hmm. um, in the days leading yeah, up what or whatever. Have that it was right there. Cause yeah. if, if the only picture is in October or videos in October up there, then, no, that deer easily could have shifted for rut range, 10 miles. Mm. Um, what do you think? That's my thoughts. Yeah. Interesting. I uh, I mean, I don't know at the end of the day. Yeah, like, I don't I, either. I'm really I'm really baffled. I wish I did know. Like, I, I want to know. I want to know. I'm impressed that CJ is is holding his ground, so he may hear that from me and just be like, piece of shit. Very possible. Yeah. Um, well, I told him straight up. I mean, dude, the I evidence hope is he, out there. <laughs> I told you know I was like dude we're gonna continue to speculate like I I have yeah I hope he proves me wrong I hope we're proved wrong there and stuff but um yeah I don't I don't know it definitely is weird that it, if he killed it where he says he killed it that it was killed so far away from uh core area. where where this core area is at not impossible but but no, weird it's November 9th it's very possible it's open ground as we just discussed um I mean Corey, Corey I holds a lot of keys here. He knows. He definitely has a second perspective. He on also that. has a lot to lose here. Sure, sure. Yeah. More, he would more than be an accomplice. Yeah, I mean, he didn't do shit until he became an accomplice. Nope. Frankly, if CJ's fiance was involved, she also has a lot to lose. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And I think CJ knows that. To your point, like, he's smarter than that, which is why, like, when I say, like, I think this is what happened, like, this is based on the circumstantial evidence that's coming forward. It's either <laughs> CJ's word versus here's all the evidence. CJ hasn't really provided me with any evidence besides his story. Like, there is no other evidence. There is no, Hear me. here's me with this deer in front of my sister's house in the daylight. Here's me by the pond with this deer. Here's the tree, uh, and here's the arrow, and here's blood on the ground. Like, I haven't seen any of that. Have you seen any of that? Not personally, no. But we're told it was shown to the warden, so, I mean, apparently it exists in some capacity. Whether it was staged or legit, I don't know. We don't know. Whereas on the circumstantial side, there's plenty of circumstantial evidence that suggests that something happened. Agreed. Um, is it proven yet? No, by any means. But it's like I've got only a word on this side of which I don't want to judge him, but like it's just his word versus there are some, there's a lot of things working against him here. I also believe that to your point earlier, and I don't know this DA, but for sure this dude is probably out for blood. The fact that I'm assuming he really wanted to kill this deer who wouldn't, and this deer didn't get killed by him and got killed by somebody like CJ. I suppose it got killed like 12, 15 miles away. I'm immediately like, no way. No way. No way. Yeah, most hunters would be no way. Mm -hmm. I also think that, you know, they're probably abusing the legal system here a bit because of their position. Like, the, the question comes down to, I do think that DNR would take it serious if it was somebody else. I don't know if things would escalate and probably have their resources unless there was a DA behind it. Mm -hmm. Again, speculative. Well, that's what I was I don't saying know. earlier. Is it's just a bummer that it's his property. Like, it just <laughs> it just looks bad. I, d I don't think that he killed it on the... On the if he did do this illegally, I don't think he killed it on the <clears throat> DA's property. I think he 100% would have shot it on the city property, right behind it. Easy access, right off the road. Uh, thick, gnarly stuff surrounded by these properties like the DA's properties, probably protected from hunting. I would assume that that deer, there's a reason that deer got to nine years old right. and it's not because he was living on the DA's property. Right. Right? Yeah, I mean, that DA has been trying to kill him for four years, I assume. 100%. Five years, probably. Six exactly. years. Exactly. <laughs> so that deer lived in a place <clears throat> there and right across the road in the landfill where he couldn't be hunted. Mm -hmm. That's why he got to nine years old and I think that's where he got killed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's a sound uh, judgment. Uh, there's the evidence that supposedly exists would prove it to be true or not true. The state's going to make a, a, a hard case. CJ's going to have a tough time fighting it. Whether it's true or not, I think just... How do, how will that get tried? I mean, th what, does that will that make it'll it... It'll go to a magistrate. Just a magistrate. So yep. there will be a judge that makes a decision, not like a... Correct. No jury. No jury. Nope. It'll be a judge. The It'll be the prosecuting which will be the state. Yep. And then CJ, I assume, will have a defense lawyer. Yep. Of which there'll be discovery and review after this case is made. It'll go to probably the Clinton County magistrate, I would assume. Um, and there will be a whole... Which, again, keep in mind, who works in Clinton County? The DA. <laughs> so there's a lot of stuff working against... Well, it. so and for that reason, it's going to have to be tried somewhere else. I don't know. If it's the DA of a town versus the DA of a county... And maybe not. I would assume this is tried at the county level. Um, I don't know. But I, I'm not positive. So ultimately, just a magistrate will make a decision on, based on the evidence you've provided. And the here. arguments from the attorneys. <clears throat> yep. Wow. Well, and, and, and if you're <clears throat> given the word of CJ, or it's anybody. I, I pick on CJ because that's who we're talking about. The word of anybody versus circumstantial evidence. The magistrate's going to lean to the circumstantial evidence over somebody's word. Certainly. And that's you have no evidence. They have some evidence. That's how he's going to look at it or she's going to look at it. Right. Well, and we have no way of knowing, like, whoever that magistrate ends up being. It's like, I mean, dude, there, there's a lot of deer knowledge here that I think provides a, a ton of context for how this may or may not have gone down. Yeah, there's a, it's a big precedence <clears throat> in some cases, too. I mean, people, people have been tried and, and found guilty of poaching, you know. The, the entire history of, of civilization in America, you know, I mean, from market hunting to, you know, recently guys shooting 20 deer here in Pittsburgh or 50 deer here in Southern Ohio. Like, I mean, it's, it, it happens all the time. What becomes interesting is like, um, it, you know, doesn't sound like he shot it outside of legal hours. He shot it with a legal weapon. It comes down to where was the location of this deer when he shot it? 
um, which is not a typical poaching case. And then how do you prove that, you know, it was at that location? There are some smoking guns. The DNA match, very possible to be a smoking gun. Cell phone pings, very possible to be a smoking gun. Frankly, testimony from Corey in one way or the other, or his fiance in one way or the other, very smoking gun esque. Because that's what will happen. Is there? And what about this? Some, what about this confession? Like that's the, the well, big, that threw us off out of the gate because it wasn't even like it. It, it came up to where like the, there wasn't even an argument from CJ. Is that <clears> he <throat> got caught and he just confessed? And it, we, you and I were like, what the? What do you mean? Like he just. He just said he did it. Like, he yep, got caught. Here it is. And then all of a sudden, it was like, no, like, I didn't confess. None of this is it, to the point where he said that they took his phone illegally. Whether they did or not, I don't know. Mm-hmm. But it was like, so wait, you didn't confess? And he's like, hell no, I didn't confess. It's like, why is that what we've heard? Yeah. And yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Any, and I, I'm still hearing that from people. Yeah. That he's confessed. Like, it's a done deal. You're right. I know. And it's like, well, what do you... <laughs> <laughs> Boy, it's it's pretty interesting. I don't. I uh, feel uh, there there's certain things of this case though that um it, two things. Number one is you know there's n- this would not have near the attention if it wasn't the deer that it was right. If it was any of these deer on the wall, probably wouldn't have gotten any attention. Sure, we may not even have known about it. Yep. Um, the, the size of the deer is you know, has a lot to do with it. And also because of that, the platforms that it was promoted on, sure. I mean, you know, we, I think the podcast we did with him has like 200,000 views and it was on North, you know, North American. Yeah, I don't know if North and, American white was supposed to have them on the cover of the <laughs> magazine. Like did they retract that, or, you know, was that a thing? Yeah, but it was a famous deer. I mean, it's, it's, it's a very, you know, it's like, <laughs> well, the deer deserves recognition. That's what I was saying. A couple people were asking like, well, you know, you need to get the other side on. And it's like, well, First of all, I want to figure out what actually happened before we take another side to this thing. This is you and I just having speculation and opinion. But regardless of what happened, that deer deserves recognition and attention. Maybe not by the way it was killed, but the fact that that deer existed just an is amazing an animal. absolute monster. Yeah. And for sure, if somebody was legally hunting that thing and it was stolen from them in a in a, you know, poaching scenario, there should be consequences. There should be consequences. Definitely. Um but what what becomes weird is that, you know, in in most poaching cases, and in, in whether it's number of deer or specific deer, you just, I mean, when a poacher goes at this thing, they're gonna do it. At, they don't give a shit how they do it. It's illegal already, so they're just gonna poach the deer. Like the fact that he trespassed and he used a crossbow and he he, he you know shot it during legal hours and all these things that seem to have to have happened, and he still was able to kill the deer. Unless it was like what I said earlier, if he saw the deer locked down, he then made an approach on it, trespassing, and shot it, made a bad shot, but it hit femoral and it died. Like, I don't know what the odds of just walking into a property blindly and that deer coming through and killing them. Not good. They're not good. Not good. I mean, dude, we try to do it with three-year-olds and we can't do it, let alone a nine-year-old monarch like that. I I would agree that your uh, explanation for what what might have happened there is probably the most accurate. You know, it's like to, to see it, d- deer do weird stuff during the rut, and they sure. were definitely rotten on November 9th. I Absolutely. Mean, I Weather was perfect. Per- yeah. Personally. So it's it's very possible that that deer was locked down with a doe, could be seen uh, maybe from the road or like, you know, maybe he was able to see it. And certainly he, he could have uh, stalked it and, and put an arrow in it. We know people that did that this year with Boone and Crockett Absolutely. deer. You know what I mean? Yep. F- saw, found them, sp- sp- uh, bedded with those, snuck up on them and shot them. Yep. To take it back to your sisters is like not what we would have done, right? <laughs> really? <laughs> right? In, in retrospect, we would have said we could be legally hunting this deer three and a half miles away instead of 10 miles away. That's much more believable. Agreed. I don't know, man. I don't, uh, what do you think should, what do you think the consequence should be? If it, if, uh, well, I mean, let's, let's be honest. And, and CJ said it, like, if you find the guy a thousand dollars an inch, where the hell is he getting a quarter million dollars from? He didn't have it to pay anyways. So, I mean, so what do they, what, what do they do in that case? They put you in jail to, in lieu of the money that you can't I don't pay? know. Or they, you know, I don't know. Or you file bankruptcy? I don't That's know what they how do, that right? Because if you don't pay taxes, if you don't have money to pay, right, they put you in jail. 
I guess so. For X amount of time. It probably translates X amount of money owed equals X number yeah, of Yeah, I mean, he's going to lose his hunting license, which if you're poaching deer, do you really care? I mean, shit, we know plenty of deer, guys who are hunting who don't buy a hunting license because they hate the government. I'd love to know when that deer was checked. Checked in? Mm -hmm. I would assume no later than the 11th because that's when he posted it to his social media. And how long after the harvest does it have to be checked? It's got to be the same day, right? 48 hours? I don't know. I don't know. Recovery? Maybe it's 24 hours with recovery. Huh. Certainly before it's processed. Yes. Because in Ohio, you have to fill the tag out before the animal's moved. That just means county it was harvested and in time that it was harvested. Hunter must uh, complete the process and receive a confirmation confirmation code by noon the day after the kill. Okay. I would assume the kill is defined on when you find it as well. And I, I, I based on his account of the story, it seems unlikely that he would have done that before noon on the 10th. Correct. Because they recovered it supposedly at like 11. That would, uh, to me, that would be, I now found it. That's when the clock would start. Yeah. Maybe that's a minor Maybe thing. Maybe that's not right, but yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. I it, it So, from a monetary standpoint, that's, you know, that's what everybody says, um, which, uh, I mean, to, to stay in line with why you made it $1,000 an inch, that's a valid, I think a valid... Um, that's ex- that's extreme though. I mean, think about you kill a hundred and thirty inch deer; it's one hundred and thirty thousand mm-hmm. dollars. That seems excessive. I mean, they're just they're trying to make it excessive so it deters you. Sure, I get it. Um, just don't do it. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, what is yeah? What is the jail time thing would be interesting because you know I would say that most people that do get I mean. Chris Brackett, Josh, Josh and Sarah Bomar. I know that they all, well, Chris, I think, was found guilty, but Josh and Sarah. Did you see plead. this thing the other day? I haven't texted, so, you know, Josh, if you see this, I'll, I'll text him about it at some point. But apparently, somebody sent me a screenshot the other day of, like, apparently he's claiming that he killed this uh, this world record crocodile. It's oh. Like, it's, like, 16 foot in wow. uh, Tanzania. It's a freaking dinosaur, like, just a giant animal. And... Uh, I don't know for sure, but supposedly he's making claims that it's up for like the world records uh-huh. being considered for that, and uh, whether he's being legit or just just yeah. making a claim, I don't know. Yeah, clickbait. He's like under scrutiny because people are like, uh, "There's no record of this being like har- entered for anything." Like it's not. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sure it's just clickbait. Yeah, 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 probably. But uh, so to those points, though, I mean, those guys had to pay monetary fines, but I don't think any of them served jail time. Mm-mm. Chris didn't serve jail time. No, Chris had a fine and loss of hunting license. Yep. What do you say, like $30,000 or something? Yeah, I don't. I think Josh lost hunting license in Nebraska only and a fine. Permanently in Nebraska? Um, Or for some period of no, time? No, I think it was like five years or something. And paid substantial fines. $70,000 or something, which is why everybody says, like, you don't pay $70,000 to plea if you're not guilty. Like, right. That's the. Right. But so, you know, keeping that standpoint, like, I think that there are certain poaching cases that absolutely deserve jail time. There were there was a case down by me where the guys had killed like five fifty five bucks or something over the course of three years, like, and they didn't. I don't think they got jail time, mm-hmm. so, which is bullshit. Yeah. Like that's that's a that's a giant massive offense. Yeah. The trespassing thing is interesting because most of the time trespassing is linked to a fine, um, but it could be it could be linked to jail time um, depending on, I think that what the magistrate thinks and the threat now, because if you're on a weapon, if you're carrying a weapon on property that you're not allowed to be on, then that's a whole different ball game versus like I'm walking through trespassing. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, it's, I don't think he'll get jail time. I think he'll get probation and yeah. Fine. And I don't really think he should, honestly. It's uh, I get assuming a, 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 he's a fair, a fair to me, to, to me, you know, loss of hunting license uh, for a, a period of time, probably not indefinitely. I mm-hmm. would say several sure. several years. Sure. You know, I don't know, three to five year loss of hunting license. There should be restitution paid to the state for the harvesting of that animal. Um, a quarter million dollars seems excessive 
uh, s- certainly if it was sold or if he made any money off of it, all of that should be confiscated mm-hmm. um, or, or paid back to this day. I guess. Well, so that was when, I, when we were talking earlier about Keith buying it. Like I know one of the, I don't know if it's factual or rumor, um, that the DNR gave Keith a receipt when they I've heard, took I've heard it, that as well, yeah. which would indicate to me that he bought it. Yeah, or that he had some monetary proof, investment, proof or, of ownership, or some sort of agreement yeah. of sale. I don't know what was drawn up between those guys. I, sure. there, there's definitely a relationship there. I don't know. Sure. Yeah, I don't know either. So obviously, if let's say Keith bought it, and well, here's a, here's a great question. Like to the, what we just discussed, I think that deer still is very admirable in terms of the quality of the animal. Like if I'm Keith, I probably want that rack back. Like, regardless if CJ poached it or not, the fact is, is, like, that was sure. the largest typical gross deer walking around. Yeah, I'm sure he wants it back. Will say give it to him? If it's confiscated? Know. And as, it, you know, assuming he's found guilty and everything? Like, I would, I don't know if they would. I think that, I bet the state holds it. I bet they mount it and put it in their office. I bet it's, when the, you see those Ohio DNR, like, traveling expos around, I bet that's where it's at. Yeah, look what we got. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tennessee did one I watched when we were in all this stuff um, I can't remember what it was called it was a giant and uh, I think somebody shot it from the road and Tennessee now has it when they do their like warden you know arounds at all the different shows and stuff I, I mean it's just a mounted monster well in fairness I mean if CJ shot it illegally and sold it or had some arrangement to sell it to Keith it's not CJ's to sell correct so I suppose the state is the proper owner. Correct. Of that. They would seize it. Of that. Mm-hmm. I think that uh, what, CJ should be held accountable for that m- money, right? Keith should be just out money, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, CJ should have to pay Keith back the money. Mm-hmm. Yes. I. The The other interesting thing is, and I know that they did it, like I think they took the crossbow and they took the tree stand. It's like, dude, whose truck was involved? Like all of those things can be seized by the state. Take your vehicle, like anything that you. Kind of surprised they weren't. He may not have a car. Well, that's where I think probably Corey or whoever, like whose truck was that in? Yeah. Yeah. If that was Corey's truck, like Corey's truck could get seized by the state. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's a serious offense when you get in, you know, to all of these discussion points and down the road on it. Um. The, the challenge, and, and, you know, I guess this is what the justice system is for, is like, it, it and I think this is why probably CJ is talking still, is that it's all very speculative and, and circumstantial at this point. Mm-hmm. He really... At least I, the public stuff is, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he, and I think whatever CJ knows, he doesn't think that there's, he either knows that it's he's telling the truth, or he doesn't think that there's enough to make a case to convict them. Yeah. But that's an interesting thing because when you talk to him, it's like, damn, I mean, like, how can this kid be that confident? Like, maybe he is telling the truth. Or he's yeah, smart enough I to know. just believe. I'm like, even if I did kill it legally, I don't know if I would be that confident. I'd be yeah, like, oh, they're like, going to. Holy it's shit, like walking man. Through These guys the, are coming for me. I know. It's like walking through the uh, security at the airport. I'm like, do I accidentally have a pistol on me somewhere? Like, it's like, yeah. you know. These guys are coming for I mean, a DA is gunning for me, it sounds like. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, the knife thing, too. Like, as soon as somebody, like a, the DNR warden or whatever says, well, we found your knives, I'd be like, Holy shit! Like, where's my knives? Like, what did I did I like? Did they find one? Did they go plan it? Like, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, crazier shit has happened in the judicial system, right? Absolutely. Well, I mean, all of the evidence that's been laid out. I mean, is it's an unfortunate, you know, thing, but it has to be said. You know, assuming there's no foul play, right? So because we've looked at, I mean, yeah, like you said about the judicial system. Like, obviously, we we want to trust the process and we want to mm-hmm. trust all the individuals involved, but you know, history has shown us that like, that's, it's not always completely well, above board. I mean, there's, there has been situations where, <clears throat> um, individuals, you know, involved with law enforcement and stuff have been found out to have, you know, tinkered with evidence or you know, intentionally or unintentionally, or, you know, there's, there's certainly, um, agenda is probably the wrong word, but there's, uh, there's motive, you know, to, to win the case essentially, you know, there's, it was taken off the DA's property or, you know, or he's yep. involved somehow, and there's, you know, 
there's there's relationships there that exist behind the scenes that like you know we we want to believe that everything's down above board and 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 I believe that is the case but um, it wouldn't be the first time yeah and so I was just trying to look it up I don't remember uh, I don't have it here I don't think but <clears throat> there um I want to say it was Virginia <clears throat> it was either somewhere down there I, I think it was Virginia but anyways there was a game warden who had seized antlers and basically in the same situation it said You're talking about this guy that killed two, two box in yes. two different states yes yeah and and it accused them of like Lacey Act violations or whatever you want to call it and I mean it it basically turned out that the guy did everything legally and they they tried to set them up, it sounds like. I mean, they, they did everything they to, could with circumstantial ev- evidence to make it seem like this guy was guilty, wow. and he wasn't. And so, like, you know, at what point, because I would assume at some point, that warden who, who went ahead and tried to do that said, holy shit, I'm in too deep. Like, if I don't make this go through, like, I'm going to be the one on the outside looking in. I'm going to be out of a job, and I'm never going to get a job again. Mm-hmm. So, like, at some point, you press that and thing full court— to try to get it, uh, you know, pushed through because if not, you're the one with the egg on the face. And so, again, and I don't know the guy, but like this DA and stuff, I'm sure he's pretty heated. I'm sure he's seen this deer. I'm sure he's been hunting this deer. I'm sure when he heard CJ killed this deer that he immediately said the kid poached it. Look at him. You know, he poached it. You can just tell. And how hard is this guy going to push it? To and so if CJ's telling the truth, like, what's the repercussion on the other side? We talk about what the repercussion is for CJ if he's found guilty. Yeah. It's the repercussion for these people who have basically made this kid's life a living hell. I mean, at this point, everybody in the public opinion thinks he shot it with a rifle under a spotlight. That's what they hear when they hear CJ's a poacher. That's what they think of. Not that he trespassed and shot it somewhere. And unfortunately, that won't really go away, even if he's it proven won't. innocent. I mean, dude, never dude, does. This may be the last time people hear about this deer, um, you know, in CJ's situation and stuff. And then if he's proven innocent, you know, a year from now or two, whatever. Nobody's going to, yeah. You know, damage has been done. Damage has been done. Yeah. There's an asterisk on it. It's tainted, basically. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, it, it becomes a, a, you know, what's the consequence on the other side? And I feel like there's not. The Hunter Podcast is brought to you by Muddy and Stealth Cam Trail Cameras. Cell cams, cell cams, cell cams. What an evolution the industry has seen. And we've experienced personally over the past five, ten, you know, whatever cameras were invented, right? It's like, man, it's totally changed the way that we inventory deer, pattern deer, and ultimately the decisions that we make when we're going out to hunt. They're a serious piece of the puzzle. And, and uh, you know, that information is invaluable for us. We trust the Muddy and Stealth Cams, you know, together to be able to, to collect any of that information. Yeah, I mean, as an admitted trail cam addict, you know, I've definitely been guilty of of under hunting places or relying too heavily on that information that's come in that said it's an invaluable tool to the overall management plan and strategy that i have for my own properties or even hunting public land it doesn't yeah. matter we have a finite amount of time in going out and hunting so when you and i are after a particular class or quality of deer usually a mature buck we can't waste time hunting an area where that deer doesn't exist. And those cell cams provide that information that allow us to spend the time in the area with the highest chance to accomplish our goals. I say it all the time, man. They can't kill them if they're not there. That's it. So right now, any of our listeners can use uh, code HUNTER20 to get 20% off either muddy or stealth cameras. Uh, we're certainly going to be taking advantage of that, and we hope you guys do too. Yep, check out Stealth Cam and Muddy. Um, it was West Virginia now that I'm looking at it. So it was West Virginia guy lived in North Carolina, killed a buck in West Virginia and North Carolina. Somehow the West Virginia DNR got a tip that this guy basically had, I don't know, killed it illegally. Um, and so they went to North Carolina to interview him and potentially press charges. And, um, for what I see, it looks like it was dropped now, but you know, case in point, like I'm sure there was probably, I, well, I remember there was a pretty a, steep case. That dude's attorney kind of made a fool of the state. I, I mean, remember that. He put out a bunch of good, uh, you know, videos basically pro- profiling the case and everything that happened there. And, and yeah, I thought the state looked pretty foolish after that. Yes. So, you know, but okay, they look foolish. What, what else? Like this guy, you know, probably in some public eye has been tainted. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's the same way with CJ. So, you know, we don't know. It, it, it Obviously, if it goes one way and CJ's found guilty, then there well, it is. Well, it's one of those things like uh, there's probably a, w- a word for uh, this type of like 
you know, discussion around consequence on law enforcement of any capacity. It's like if I, you know, if I shoot somebody or Mm -hmm. whatever, you know, I, I affect somebody's life by enforcing the law. And then it turns out that I was in the wrong. What are the repercussions? And so, so law enforcement, you know, people that advocate for law enforcement, which we are in that group, obviously, uh, would, you always want those people to have some level of protection, Mm -hmm. right? Some, some insurance, like, you know, and I don't know how far it's like some acknowledgement that like, Hey, things happen in the moment. Like they're just, they're people and like, but there has to be accountability too. It's like, you know, if this dude pulls up and shoots this guy and the dude was innocent or like not deserving to be shot and mm-hmm. it, like there should be, yes, there should be consequence there too. Yeah. You know, and the same is true like in, in a game violation, it's <laughs> not life or yeah. death, but yeah. And I mean, again, the unfortunate thing at this point is this is a hot topic. One of the reasons we're talking about it. Um, I just think it's going to take time. Like, I don't, I don't think that state's going to rush to make a case. Mm -mm. Um, I don't think that they're going to rush to, to reveal evidence. Um, I'm sure again, like I said earlier, the more time that we have here, the more people are going to talk, things are going to come out. Like from this podcast, somebody could easily say, yeah, here's a picture from this location the same day he shot it. That's just pretty smoking. Looks that, yeah. that looks bad. <laughs> that looks real bad. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you got to wonder, like, I mean, who the magistrate is that makes this decision is a, a big, big deal. Sure. Because there's a lot of deer knowledge. There's a lot of like understanding how somebody might go about uh, mm-hmm. executing something like this that will go into that decision. At the same breath, CJ could say, hey, here's from my attorney. This is the data from my phone. You can see that I've never been up in that area. I've always been down here. That would do it. I mean, that would help, <laughs> you know, so, well, and I don't know, just say, okay, yeah, your phone's never been there. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's still circumstantial. <laughs> like, I don't, I guess that's where like, I, unless there is like photo documentation of him on one of these properties, um, testimony is the other thing, like mm-hmm. testimony circumstantial, right? Like what Corey's going to say is what Corey's going to want to say. That doesn't mean that it's a fact. Just what Corey's going to say. Could he perjure himself? Sure. Who cares? Nobody cares anymore. If you were testifying, if I said, if if we were in cahoots like we talked about earlier, I say, hey, dude, they're going to ask you, they're going to subpoena you. You're going to have to testify. You and I know the story. Well, wouldn't Corey also be getting charged with, I mean. He's it, going to. Yeah, I mean, if they're, if they're claiming that uh, he, when he, you know, what they're saying he did, you know, Corey would be an accomplice to that. Absolutely. Which is, is also criminal. Yeah. So, I mean, he would be getting charged as well. There's so, a lot of people that, uh, frankly, CJ's fiance could be an accomplice in this thing. How seriously are confessions taken? Confessions and also testimony. Because Conf- Corey's is not a testimony. That's a confession. It would be a confession of his guilt. I mean, confessions and testimonies put a lot of people behind bars for life. They do. Yep. And a lot of people will tell you that, uh, and I think like that these confessions can be coerced, right? That they're... The, the law enforcement oh, keeps you there and, and eventually you write what they tell you to write because you just want to get the hell out of there. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, but between that, te- that, that admission, right, that confession, that signed confession, what is what will be used as evidence against the main perpetrator or in this case, CJ. Yeah. So if Corey would write a confession to say, yep, this is exactly how it happened. Now it's Corey's word versus CJ's word, but guess what the magistrate's going to take that confession. Yeah. And that sucks. Cause, um, CJ's got a lot more to lose. I think being the actual, uh, you know, the guy that pulled the trigger basically. And, and Corey's just, if he was an accomplice, you know, they're going to let him off easy by, you know, they're saying, Hey, just, just say that he did it. Mm-hmm. And we'll let you off Scott for we'll let you off. Or we're not whatever, whatever that looks like. We won't we won't continue to prosecute you for being an accomplice. I could see case. them leveraging CJ too. They'll say, "Hey, listen, you know your fiance and your kids have a lot to lose here. You admit guilt, and we'll leave her out of this thing. You fight this thing, and we're going to bring her in as an accomplice too. Now, mm-hmm. what do you do? Interesting, right? I mean, that's the leverage that that gets put onto people. I think a a lot, and it's like sure, like. I'm sure if they put that in my position, if, if let's say I didn't do anything, right. But they're building this circumstantial case against me and they say, Hey, listen, you either admit to this, right. And here's what's going to happen. You're going to pay this fine. You're going to do all this stuff, or we're going to rope your wife in 
And because we roped your wife in, now child services is going to get roped in. First thing I'm going to say is, fine, whatever. Write me up. What do you want me to say? Why am I get, I'm there's I don't, no, I don't think you would though. I mean You it, would. Well, you would have to. Well, it would depend on your if you're innocent or not. It also depend on the resources you have. I may I have a lot more resources than CJ has. Mm-hmm. What CJ have to fight? Yeah. He's going to get what a public defender probably. Well, so how how does that work from a from a legal standpoint? Like are there attorneys that would be willing to to do this work pro bono if they see the evidence and say i'll do this and we're but it's contingent on base, we're going to basically counter sue the state after when when we prove that you're innocent mm-hmm. we're going to yes, sue them absolutely and i'm going to take 80 percent of the proceeds i would i would assume that if he doesn't cj's working on an attorney like that he should be at least mm-hmm. yep to counter sue the state for but because you have to right i mean but if you lose you owe that attorney money they're not working pro bono it's a one way or the other Yeah, you know, is that how pro bono works? I mean, well, it's not a pro bono case. I don't think they would take pro bono. Would be like we're taking it for free because it's for the betterment of humanity, or you know, it's a it's a racial thing, or it's w- discrimination, or whatever. This is not that. This is a criminal trial. Mm. So very rarely, I think, do you get pro bono criminal attorneys. They're working for one thing or the other, which is, you know, unless they again, truly think that it was like a discrimination or a wrongdoing or you see a lot of the innocent project type stuff where people were convicted of murder yeah, yeah. and then they didn't do it. Like those people are doing defenses Just, from a pro bono standpoint because yeah, yeah. it's the right thing to do. Right. I don't think you see that here. I think he he racks up lawyer bills and the, the way to pay them is to counter sue the state afterwards. But if you lose, those bills are on your head. And that's an interesting piece right there. Like, I mean, I'm a, a, I'm not saying that he... I don't w- think the bills can be on your head, though, because, like, it, Absolutely the attorney's should. the one that lost. Well, no, you're the one who lost. Yeah. They're charging you for the time. If you lose, but it's their case to lose. Mm-hmm. So I don't think... You know what I'm saying? So how I was going to spin that is, like, <clears throat> I don't think CJ is necessarily lying to you. <clears throat> but obviously the first thing as an attorney, I've been in an attorney office, first thing they say is, I need to know everything. Mm-hmm. I don't care what you did. Mm-hmm. I don't care if you killed somebody. Give me all the facts. I need to know everything. Yeah. That attorney, if he's working with one, knows exactly what's happened. And if CJ lied to that attorney, then he's setting himself up for failure. Because mm-hmm. then the attorney's not going to have all the pieces. I would assume a lot of people lie to their attorneys. So. Sure. Because they're not going to say, well, yeah, I did it. <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> I, I don't gonna, know. I don't know. say, okay, well, let me get this up. I killed 10 people. Yeah, let me get this out here. First. We're only here for five of them, but I actually, nobody's going to say that. So I would assume that they lie. This and that's like cl- client attorney uh, privilege. Right. Well, it is. And yeah. that's why a lot of these people lose their cases is because the attorneys don't have all the facts to defend it appropriately. Mm. So all of a sudden something comes out of right field, like these knives, and they're like, dude, yeah, tell you, said those, you said those weren't your knives. Well... I'm, somebody else may have had them. Well, now you've lied to me. You didn't tell me everything. Mm. Here we are down this path. That's what that's what happens in a court case. Yeah. So I mean, you if you want your best chance, you know, no matter if it's good or bad, you gotta you gotta pour it out to your attorney. They're the only ones looking out for you. I want to believe that you know we can have closure on this at some point. I want to believe that it can be proven. Like maybe We're not far e- from it at this point. Maybe not exactly. At least for what we know. Yeah. I'm sure the state has things that are more definitive that we don't know about. But as of right now, we seem very far from it. We seem just spiraling on circumstantial evidence on both sides. Right. Which, I mean, if I'm the magistrate, like most of that circumstantial evidence, like, you know, while it's worth considering, like is is frankly not worth anything. Correct. You know, it's like. They haven't shown anything to prove that e- even CJ if that deer was pick, you know, ha- they have a picture of it and they can prove not just from the time stamp or f- from somebody's word, which is all they're going to have to say that it was here 12 hours before it was killed here. Even that it's not good enough. It's not good enough in my opinion. That deer will cover 10 miles in 3 hours if he wants to. If he wants to, yeah. Um all of the speculation about like, well, you said this on the podcast and the phone yeah, thing. that's a twist on words. Speculation, you know, mis misspeaking. Uh, none of that is valid evidence. I, I think the knives, you know, in a crime scene and DNA, whether it's able to be matched. 
Which, yeah, I mean, Assuming I don't know there's what no the, foul play. And I also evidence. don't know what the, the accuracy is. Like, obviously, mm-hmm. a lot of people get put in jail because of DNA. Like, what it, what about on a deer level? Is there that much variance? I wonder if that's say? ever been done. I wonder if they've oh, ever. absolutely has. Yeah? Yes. DNA, deer evidence has put using, people. Using hides and stuff, for sure. Hmm. Do you yes. have a specific account? Like, do you know? Um, I I want to say that there were a couple, a bunch of accounts in, like, Tennessee or Texas that, that did some. <laughs> That had poaching cases that they were matching DNA up from um, from capes to I don't know what it was if it was skull caps or whatever. Oh, let me ask you this: Can they do that? I would, uh, What's can, that? Can you take DNA from just antlers? Because before I would you know realized the cape had also been confiscated. Mm-hmm. So some somebody caped it, right? I assume it, assume it was C. Day and Corey. No, he said his taxidermist caped it. Oh, his taxidermist caped it. Yeah. Okay. I wonder, can you take DNA evidence from just a skull cap or horns? Like after some time has passed, like let's say you salted it or you put borax on it. And like in some cases, maybe there's small amounts of flesh and stuff left around the pedicle. I assume they can pull it from that. Yep. But if not. I don't know. I would assume most of it's coming from the hair. Hair hair follicles and stuff. Yeah. I would say most of it's coming from hair follicles. So if there's hair around the, you know, the bases at the burr and stuff. I'd love to know how they end up doing that if they do. Yeah, I mean, in this case, it sounds like they have some residue at the knife scene that they're going to try to match to the hide. I would think so. That seems like it would be concrete. Because what do you say to that? You know, if you're CJ, you know, hey. uh, The uniqueness of DNA and deer, I don't know. uh Like, I don't, you know, I know in like the humans, it's like, hey, it's a 99.9995% chance that it's you that did it. Right, right, right. I don't know if there's that much variation in deer. It could be, what if it says it's 95%? Well, shit, there's still 5%. That's a lot of deer in the world. Yeah, but not that look like that. I mean, when you talk about the amount of inbreeding that happens in a deer population, I would assume that there's a lot of shared DNA. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't Because you don't see that at a human level, right? Like, we don't... Uh, oh, inbreeding? Unless you're in certain uh, parts of the yeah, state. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> right, right, right. right. <laughs> certain parts of the state. Speaking of, <laughs> yeah. I'll not mention the state there, but. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, you, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm, it, mm-hmm, from a human mm-hmm. side, like, you don't have that overlap, so there's unique variation in the DNA, whereas from a deer side, you know, these are very isolated herd populations where I would assume that there's quite a bit of overlap. Uh-huh. Uh, for some reason, I was just thinking about, like, what if you killed a guy <laughs> on my property? And then the next night took a picture of him holding him like this, and then you had to do DNA evidence to be like, yeah, that's him. <laughs> yeah, that's him. I think that's him. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I don't... I, the hardest part, I think, from that CJ has right now is that CJ has not provided any physical evidence to say that he shot the deer on his sister's property. Well, well, he has, though. I mean, that's what taking the warden out there and showing him. What did he show him? The scene. Which he showed him, I shot it, I sat here, I shot it here. I guarantee that warden found no blood evidence or anything like that. If it was brush hogged and several days later, I think CJ also said it rained. Like, I don't, there's nothing there. It was purely a, let me verify your story of how you killed this deer. Then maybe, yeah, that would nullify it. Yeah, I would, because I would assume if he found like, a, a big bed where this deer had laid. What could you do to prove it? I mean, what what would prove that they killed it there? I mean, w- we don't have pictures on the property, time stamped near when he said he found it. Mm-hmm. We don't have any of that. That metadata. Yeah, I mean, so the picture exists. If it, yeah, if, but if, when was if they that? are like we think they're able to, if they're able to look at that picture and say, okay, it was killed. That picture was taken at this time in this location. Mm-hmm. Yep, that would help. It would help. It would just say. He took a picture with the deer there, like, but you could make an argument, well, if he killed it that night, then he took it to the property the next day and took that picture during the day. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if that would prove it. Yep. Um, a blood trail and, you know. Marks on the tree to where he was climbing up with his mm-hmm. climber. Yeah, that stuff would be verifiable. I mean, not, yep. not proof necessarily, no. but. No, just supporting evidence. Because you could make a blood trail pretty easily. Like, you could drip, dip your hand in blood and. Sure. Flick it as yeah. you walk, you know? Absolutely. Um, you could gut it there. You could, you know, you could say, hey, mm-hmm. this is right where it fell. And I killed it right here. I could, I'd kick it all up. It's a dude, he was right here. He was kicking. And yeah, I mean, I, the knife thing is the, the most compelling, I guess. Other than that, I mean, I mean, that's a murder weapon. That's, I think everything else is circumstantial and or going to be based on testimonies. 
of yep. guys like Corey, uh, maybe people like this DA. Will uh, they give testimonies? The Will they publicize Absolutely. those? Um, I don't know. Because, again, it's just the magistrate. There is no jury. So they'll call witnesses. They'll call Corey, probably. They'll probably call his fiance. They'll call the warden that was out there the first time. They'll probably call this DA. Um, anybody else that can, you know, if they yeah. find a, a clerk at Speedway. Like, they'll call these people in. I'm getting a call here. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Kill us. They haven't called us yet. Yeah. I mean, for um, anybody that's wondering, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, it. it uh, I think that they'll testify, and they'll, they'll, you know, subpoena these people to come in and testify, you know, what they kn- know about it. That's when things get really dicey, because when you talk about jail time, especially for accomplices, that's where perjury comes in, right? You know, if What's you... What's perjury? Oh, yeah. You're lying on the stand. Oh, okay. So, if you're... CJ's buddy and you go up and you perjure yourself like you say nope this is what happened CJ's telling the truth we did this we did this and then evidence comes out to contradict that you now can be found guilty of perjury and you'll go to jail Mm -hmm. which that's why I say that some of these people have a lot more to lose than CJ does as being accomplices like I wouldn't say more to lose right because CJ he'd be in the same situation well I mean CJ if he did it yeah 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 like they didn't do it yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like if deep. they're gonna perjure for him, now they're they're in deep shit. Yeah, yeah, definitely. On but on the flip side, you know what? And I'm assuming I mean, like a DA is not gonna perjure. That's himself. a real friend that would perjure for you. <laughs> <laughs> shit, yeah. <laughs> you you want to test your relationship? You guys are gonna be <laughs> sailmates if, if it doesn't go the right way. Yeah. But I mean, on the flip side, like I assume a DA is not gonna perjure himself, um, or a game warden. But like you know. What evidence are those guys going to submit that really shows strong objective evidence versus cir- circumstantial stuff? Yeah, I don't. I don't know how you get around the knife one. You know, if those that's knives were found, if they have that's sloppy. If, if they can is. prove that it's his, and they can, whether that's by matching DNA or by some other means, then that's that's tough. <sighs> how do you explain that? You know. That would be an oh shit moment for CJ. If if it's if he they, knows about it. If, they showed him the pictures. They said, Hey, we found your knives, you're done. And his response was you know, those aren't my knives. I don't know what, I don't know what to tell you. That's ballsy. If it's if it if they are his. Yeah. Cause I mean that's the oh shit moment. That's the I done Definitely. I done fucked up. It's your murder weapon. They found I it. I got caught. Yeah. Yeah. I was clean on everything else, but that's the that's the non circumstantial evidence that's gonna get me. Because if they match that residue to the cape, you're dead. Yeah. To me, that that's it. That's it. That's, that, that that's on top probably of a, what we're that waiting for. on top of for. a testimony, yeah. That's probably what we're waiting for. If, mm-hmm. the, if the DNR can match residue on the knives found on a property he was not supposed to be on with the cape of the deer that he killed, game over. Mm-hmm. And if you're one of these accomplices, I'd make sure that my truthful testimonies on record before that drops because if it drops and you haven't come clean you're in deep shit too because i assume they've interviewed him Who? i assume they've interviewed Corey. yep i would assume they've probably interviewed his fiance i would assume so so you have something on record that best align with proving cj right because if they throw this evidence and it hits him and and those knives match as accomplices, you're in trouble as well. Huh. You see what I'm saying? Because you basically have perjured on the record at that point. Yeah, I do. I don't know if that's as serious as perjuring <clears throat> from the stand. I, I don't know how you get around the knife thing. I mean, you know, we're just having fun with this thing at this point. I mean, I mean, could, could it be a bluff? By who? The DNR. Could the DNR call him and say, found your knives, you're done? Just to try to cohorse a confession out of him can they do that throw throw bluff evidence before a case absolutely it's not in court seems like entrapment oh dude it's just me calling you and saying hey i found your knives you're done because all that might be like like, oh shit did i really forget my knives like i'm done i'm busted i better come clean Uh it's just a bluff yeah it's not evidence that's turned into the court yet for what we know yeah well, we don't know any evidence yeah. that was turned in. So, like, a- yeah, anything that we're saying here is like speculative based off of social media and just people that have talked to us. Yeah, so, I mean, it easily could be a bluff to just say, mm-hmm. okay, if we say, hey, we found your knives here, 
that he's going to come clean. He's going to realize. <laughs> and he's the like, ball. they're not mine. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> yeah, very possible. Yeah, they're not mine. You know, he hmm. may know, like, no, this is the knife, and I have it, and so you're wrong. That's what he told me. Called the bluff. Yeah. The DNA would, would disprove that. Um, if there's DNA on the knives, and it wasn't a bluff. And assuming there's no foul play. I mean, I would say that's a pretty strong bluff for most poaching incident. Like, if I said, hey, I found knives near the gut pile. Like, because maybe they did find the gut pile, but no knives. Mm-hmm. Like, I found your knife by the gut pile. Like, you're done. Well, the gut pile alone would do it. Because, I mean, that's uh, that's DNA. How, how do you explain the gut pile here and the deer here? Yeah. If it's a high percentage match, you know, they could say this is definitely. So maybe they didn't find the gut pile. They just found knives. Uh, That's the way I understand it. I don't. That they just found knives. Uh-huh. Which, yeah, seems weird. Seems like a bluff. Because mm-hmm. he would be like, I didn't gut it there. I know that I didn't use my knife there. Mm-hmm. I yeah, and if you didn't, I'd say the same thing. I'd be like, what are you talking about? Those, those, those aren't my knives. Very possible that that could have been a bluff to try to get him to to say, ah, shit, I got caught. I, maybe I did drop my knife. Why would know. you bluff about two knives, though? If I'm going to bluff, it's one knife. Two is weird. I'd be, if I'm CJ and I didn't put those there, I'd be like, why would I have two knives? Like, What yeah. are you even talking about? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if the the only way that that is their only smoking gun that I know of right now. Mm-hmm. Even a picture with a timestamp is subjective. Mm-hmm. Him being caught somewhere, like it let's say they did drag it out to that road, load it up. If they got caught on like a a ring camera driving by somebody's house on that road during like daylight hours, now you're screwed. Like those those things could could happen. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, something that would prove that you weren't where you said you were either when you killed it or around that time, like like a mismatching location mm-hmm. and time frame. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I don't know. I don't know what the timing will be. The unfortunate thing is you know, this conversation is, is good to have while the iron's hot. It's all speculative because we don't know what's going to be turned up, but I don't. it'll be a while, I think, before we know what has actually come to fruition. Yeah. It'd be great to be a fly on a wall in that case and hear it and be like... I'd love to hear those testimonies. I'd love to see how that goes down. I mean, Yeah, we, I don't know if that'll be public. We're uh, personally invested. I mean, a little bit. At least we're, we're curious, right? I mean, if, if the kid came on here and, and lied to our faces, I'd love I'd love to know and be able to look back and assess that and be like, wow, I guess, you know... I, I also don't want them to get, you know, jammed up for something just because somebody was jealous, which Big Deer will make you do stupid things both ways, whether he shot it or somebody is going to dump it on him until they prove that he shot it. Definitely. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's... it's. Uh, it doesn't seem like there's enough evidence for anybody to make a call right now. There, there's things that... Can not be, that the public knows. That can be found out, yeah, that, that should prove the case one way or another. Somebody's going to say something here soon enough. It, again, the longer it goes, the more people are going to run their mouth. And mm-hmm. something's going to be said here probably in the next four weeks and somebody's going to say, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense with what they told me. Mm-hmm. You know, whatever it is. Like, hey, we saw him on this camera or, you know, uh, he he did stop at this place, but it was at this time. He already had the deer in the back of the truck and he said he didn't recover it till the next morning. Like, something like that will come through. Yeah. Uh, or what if somebody... Ends up coming forward and saying, hey, I'm actually closer to where this kid said he saw, shot it, and I got a picture of the night before that deer. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, it's like, holy shit. Mm-hmm. Now what? Yeah. He for, he for sure believes people are going to owe him a big apology. Uh, me, potentially included, based on what I said today. Mm-hmm. Which, if it's proven... Well, whatever. I mean, no apology needed. I mean, it's we're free to speculate, sure. right? We can... We can you know, assess the evidence and stuff. And like, I, you know, I told CJ, I was like, man, I hope you're not lying to, I mean, to, to his face on over the phone, you know, I said, you know, I think you understand why, you know, we need to be open-minded to evidence that's put out there. I mean, an accusation's made, we want to know the mm-hmm. truth ultimately. And I'm hearing what you're saying. And I want to, I don't have any reason not to believe you. Like we don't have history before this. We don't have, you know, sure. As yeah, far, we're not as, trying to as, far as judging your character or being there physically, or I don't have any of that. I just have your word to go on. And I have the evidence that's been put out there. Um, very little of which has been confirmed until it is by the state, at which point, you know. I'd welcome anyone anonymously to DM us, and if you think you've got a critical piece of this thing, yeah, I'd love to know. Well, yeah, by all means. At some point, 
it, it just because it keeps seeming like he's the center of attention here too is like when this thing plays itself out, I'd love to have this quote unquote DA on the podcast to hear his side of it. Mm-hmm. Like what, you know, how, how'd this all go down? I mean, we, the, the thing that seems missing here is like, we don't or have somebody a, on the law enforcement. I'd love to know how they put the, a case like this together. We didn't have any, um, we didn't have any history of this deer before CJ came on this podcast. Like, and, he, and CJ couldn't chime in any history of this. This deer, according to those sheds, has a long history of being a super giant and escaping deer hunters. Which does and I don't think rightfully he, I don't deserves. Think he claimed to have any knowledge of it. To he prior, didn't. He right? didn't. He's like I. The first time he saw that deer was his very first. Yep. Anything. Which is why I'm so intrigued to hear somebody who has history with this deer. This deer is eight or nine years old, probably. Like that's amazing. Where in, is in it and of li- itself, the fact that that deer is that old and that big. Where has it been? Like in, in a bait state like Ohio, the fact that he's yeah. eluded hunters for that long on small parcels is amazing. Like people, people have found sheds from this deer. He's existed. He's been around. Like what? What is the backstory of this deer? Somebody knows. Yeah. Uh, and it, that deer deserves to have that story told. Mm-hmm. Um, how it ends, you know, yet to be determined. Um. Besides, he's dead. Uh, but it, it at least the the story up to this, somebody has a really cool history with this deer that I think deserves to be heard. Definitely. So, we'll see. Definitely. Well, beyond that, dude, I hear we'll get a couple minutes here. Okay. What else have you been up to? Uh, well, it's January, so that's depressing. I had my first deer shed out. You want to talk about real estate this week? All? Yeah. You want to? Let's do that. Okay. So, um... You know, we've talked about it for probably, what, the last two years or so from mm-hmm. a real estate side. Uh, you know, Jared and I have been agents for Whitetail Properties here in the southwest part of the state um, for the last two years. And, uh, you know, been a huge learning experience for us. Um, really have enjoyed it as we got into the land side of things. Um, I would say it was probably eight or nine months ago at least that um, it kind of became abundantly clear that, we're just not in a hunting land area. It mm-hmm. uh, doesn't mean that we don't sell some hunting land because we do on occasion. Well, if we're honest with ourselves, I think looking back, you know, and first of all, we are Whitetail Properties guys, like at heart, yeah. through and through. Absolutely. It's a, it's a great company. Everything that they preach from an ethics standpoint is are things that we yes. wholeheartedly align with. Um, and it's a great company. Um, you know, but even from the get go, like we knew we're like, dude, Southwestern Pennsylvania is not Illinois. Yeah, pe- people it's not aren't Iowa. spending five, $6,000 an acre for good deer hunting ground here. It's, I wish they were, they, but they're not. Yeah. Yeah. Ba- basically to, to put it straightforward, you know, recreation is not the market driver in Southwestern Pennsylvania. There are nooks and crannies. You know I mean? We, we can go to seven Springs. Mm-hmm. We can go to, um, you know, there's areas to, to recreate that are, yeah. Desirable. But and, most of the area of Southwest Pennsylvania is for building and living. Yeah. Our land values um, are, are driven. You know, or from, oil from, and gas, yeah. which is a huge Natural one. Natural resources is, is a huge one. You know, that'll basically double the value of your property uh, depending on your location. But, you know, d- timber is an aspect of that. Development is a big aspect depending on your, uh, mm-hmm. you know, distance from ur- urban sprawl and stuff like that. And then uh, individual development. So so home sites and, yep. and minor recreation, you know, having to do it. Yeah, basically I like to hunt. I just want some property in my out the back door type of thing. Those are the things that drive market value um, in our territory. And the per acre value will range anywhere from, you know, as as far Southwest in the state as you can go from $2,000 an acre, you know, with steep terrain and some timber that's tough to get to. And most of the oil and gas has been leased out or sold out from it, you know, already up to, you know, your, your Pittsburgh suburbs and some of the, the high dollar, you know, surrounding areas where you'll see, you know, 20, 30, uh, $40,000 an acre, you know, more lot pricing, yeah, you know, lot homes prices. on acreage for mm-hmm. five to 10 acres, you know, and Jeremy and I do sell those. Um, so I, I think that realization over, like I said, we, knew, tough we to, knew that to come to, because like you said, we are white tail property guys at heart. The reality is you pick us up and you put us in a state like Missouri or Illinois or Iowa, and we do what we love to do, which is sell whitetail hunting ground. Yeah. The reality is, is where we live in our home area. Um, it, it's not here. It doesn't exist. Yep. 
So from a financial perspective, which th- this was primarily a financial decision mm-hmm. for us to uh, to leave Whitetail Properties, which is what we've done, mm-hmm. um, was based on you know, the brand Whitetail Properties um, is expensive, right? So guys, yes. guys will tell you, you, you know, you, you pay a premium. And, and, and it w- comes with marketing assets and, and a marketing communicator basically by region. and Tremendous value. Yeah, huge value. Training initially. If, if you don't in a weird case like us, have access to those things outside of whitetail mm-hmm. properties, which we do. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of things that come with it that you pay for um, that we we utilize, but we didn't really need um, because we did a lot of things ourselves. And uh, I still have ownership in a marketing company that we have access to to use for website, graphic materials, mailers, etc. So... It, there were things that we were paying for that I'd rather pay my own company or just do anyways. Yeah. And, uh, just, you know, for context, it's, it's not a small amount of money. I mean, it, it's a, it's a large mm-hmm. portion of every transaction that's done goes back to any real estate brokerage. That's how, that's yep. how brokerages make money. But in the case of whitetail, because of their premium branding and all the services that they offer, they, they can charge a premium. Mm-hmm. Uh, and for us, because of the resources that we have available and the properties that are for sale in our territory, it just didn't make sense for us to continue to pay that premium is no. what it comes down to. No, the, the the assets and the access to those assets that we had and the branding didn't carry enough to offset the expensive cost yeah. of, of carrying the brand as basically a franchisee. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, so we left uh, basically... On good terms. I mean, we've yeah. got, we got a lot of friends at Whitetail Properties, you know, across the country, and there's some great guys. Like I said, it's an awesome company. When did uh, that end up happening? First part of December? Yeah. First part of December. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So that we turned in our official resignation, made sure that our, our current clients and stuff were taken care of. Uh, we couldn't bring them with us, right? They stay at Whitetail. And then we started our, our new venture, which was basically to partner with Keller Williams Land. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of different people here, Keller Williams or Coldwell Bank or Howard Hanna, right? There's all these different groups out there. <clears throat> what we ended up looking at from a business standpoint were um, Keller Williams sets up best for entrepreneurial driven people. like our, And that's what Jared and I basically thrive on is yeah. the ability to develop our own business having structure, having tools at our fingertips, but running our own business. Yep. Um, and, and all those tools and assets that Keller's developed over, you know, however many hundreds of, you know, billions of, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's a big company, right? You know, and so, but regionally, you know, the tools that they offer, the infrastructure that exists is tailored towards the types of properties uh, that we sell. Yep. And so, and also, you know, financially there, there's a, as far as the commission splits and stuff like that, there's there's a lot of that tied into the decision as Huge well. Huge piece so, of it, yeah. So financially, it, it was a no brainer for us as far as the tools that are offered. Um, there were some pretty big advantages that were offered there. And, and we're coming into kind of a unique niche because most of the Keller Williams agents across the country, especially even in our area, are residential agents, yeah. right? They're selling this house and this housing plan. Um, we're not, right? We're focusing on rural houses. Uh, land, build lots, things that matter to our area that there isn't really many agents that just say, I'm going to do this stuff. Um, And that's, you know, that's really what we've come to know over the last two years. That's really what we've tried to tee ourselves up as with that side. And so, so yeah, so we're under the Keller Williams uh, land, Keller Williams Realty side of things, but we've kind of established our countrysidegroup.com which is really like our branding uh, around this side. So this is, you know, our way of kind of saying, that, you know, this is our group. This is what we're doing. You know, we're kind of the rural house and land focused experts in this area. Um, and yeah, it allows us to be more entrepreneurial and and develop ourselves a little bit more than we had with a whitetail. Yeah. Yeah. No, well said. So yeah, if anybody's followed like Jeremy and I's you know, uh, endeavors with whitetail or, or as we move forward with, with Keller Williams, basically our, our land pursuit in the business that Jeremy and I are running here. Um, our, our vision for the business that we want to grow, um, and you know, the, the types of properties that we want to focus on has not changed, Mm -hmm. but our ability to do so, you know, the, the financial, you know, 
background of that and, and Jeremy and I's partnership has, is unchanged essentially. Yep. Um, it's just evolved here. And so Jeremy and I are still partners <clears throat> in that we left together, mm -hmm. um, you know, on good terms, like I said. And so we're moving forward with that. We're actively building our business and, uh, you know, seeing a lot of success early on here. So I'm confident it was the right decision. It, it's, it's never easy to, to leave an organization like yep. that, especially one that you can see eye to eye with, uh, on, on so many different levels. But, Ultimately, I think we just had to do what was right for us. Yep. And uh, yeah, and I think the the one cool thing about this is um, <clears throat> we're kind of retrailblazing with a few other guys across the country the new kind of Keller Williams land look of things and and what those agents uh, are striving to do, and that gives you and I an ability and and people listening like if if we didn't really have much say in in who was hired on at Whitetail or who came on with Whitetail. That's like, it's very territory based. Um, it's, it's very driven by the corporate um, <clears throat> side of things. Whereas this Keller Williams land stuff, like if you're interested, if you live in Ohio, you live in Illinois, you live in Kansas, whatever, if you're interested in, in learning more, like contact Jared and I, like we can help onboard you. Like we have that flexibility to be part of this team, this core team out of the gate to help grow that side of things. And, you know, the cool thing, again, seeing entrepreneurial side is, and it depends by your state, but you know, we have the countryside group.com, which is our group here in Pennsylvania that we're functioning under, you know, depending on what your state is, you'll be part of the Keller Williams land team, but you can create your own brand, right? Uh, depending on the state guidelines from the real estate commissions in your area. So you have an ability to really grow something. And, and, um, you know, I think the, even though you and I are putting a lot of effort into the real estate side, you know, even if it's just, Hey man, I'd love to sell a handful of properties in my area. Um, just so I have money to go out and buy my own land. Like Keller Williams may set up very well for you to do that. Whereas something like a white tail is not like, that's a full-time commitment that they're asking from very dedicated. So, um, you know, there's a lot of flexibility in, in what we've got from this Keller Williams land side that, you know, if you're interested, reach out to us, DM us. That's probably the easiest way to, to look at it and, and get a hold of us on that side. Yeah. And shameless plug. I mean, if, if you live in Southwestern Pennsylvania or any part of Pennsylvania yep. and you're looking to buy or sell and you're intrigued and, you know, interested in working with Jeremy and I in any capacity, we'd be happy to help you. Yeah. Just talk to us. Um, whether we can do so directly or we can, uh, you know, help you with some <clears> of our <throat> contacts and stuff. Like Jeremy said, you can reach us at the countryside mm -hmm. and, uh, or on any of our hunter stuff, obviously we're, we're, we're trying to be responsive to you guys, but we're here to help. So, yep. So that's kind of the big thing and it's, you know, seasons wrapping up here. I know you guys have doe fest. That's kind of where we're at here. Yeah. State of mind. It's like the CJ thing here has been a big deal. Like we've always Huge. been paying attention to that. We've been going through this transition out of Whitetail Properties and into Keller Williams land under the Countryside Group. Been a lot of, yeah, that's a lot of work to rebrand ourselves. <laughs> We've been busy. The season is, you know, uh, is is slowing up here a bit. You know, Ohio goes uh, into the first week of February, and I've still yep. got an Ohio tag in my pocket. Me too. As do you. How late does Kentucky go? Uh, just to the 15th. We're almost done here. Which one of my big ones I saw that. made it through? He shed. I saw that on Instagram before you How sent it to me. How funny is the heck? that, dude? So it was, I'll tell the story real quick. So this buck, I've, I haven't seen him since October. And I think he's only three. But I mean, he is just mm -hmm. one of the biggest frames of a Kentucky deer I've Stud. seen. He's in 70 acres of mountain it's ground. for days. It's not yeah. even on my new property. He's behind my camp. Yep. And um, so he shows back up on camera. He, he had busted both of his G2s. He's a, he's a six by five. Busted both of his G2s. And I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe this deer survived. Well, there was a, probably a four-year-old eight-point that he was with around this feeder. And at one point, it was like 3.30 in the morning, I saw they kind of, you know, just were, they're getting close tickling. to their tickling it around. And like five minutes later, he shows up and he's missing his strong side. And I'm like, holy shit, like he dropped that thing. And it was like a couple minutes after that, I like zoomed in and I could see the antler in the picture right where they were tickling. They knocked, he knocked it off. He showed up last night. He still has his other side. He hasn't kicked it yet. Wow. Um, but I was like, I've How never, cool is that? and now I'm like twitching. Cause it's like, I'm like, man, I need, I want to go pick that thing up. Absolutely. So I'm just like every day watching it to make sure there's like That's no cool. squirrels on it. But, um, <laughs> so yeah, it's, it, that ends the 15th. Uh, what are you going to do if somebody just walks by your uh, camera, picks it up? They're dead. <laughs> they're dead, dude. I have, I've only found, actually, Emily's, I think, been the only one that's found sheds on that property so far walking around. I've never found one there. Wow. Um, so 15th there, 15th here in Pennsylvania. You have Doe Fest this week. 
Um, yeah. I've got, we're going down to our camp. My dad and Harlan and I are going down for muzzleloader. I'm basically, I think my dad will shoot his bow. Harlan will shoot the muzzleloader. And I'm just kind of like, I don't care what you kill. Yeah. The OFS will be interesting. So my, my dad did it last year with a, a handful of guys. It's it's kind of just an excuse to get kids out there. And but well, we, you guys need to kill some. Does. We need to kill some does off yeah. of there. We live in like you know ag country, and there's there's uh, I would say it's I would say it's medium to high deer density, mm-hmm. and we have adequate food for most of the season, and we supplement with food plots and stuff, and you know we try to do more every year. Your big bean field holding up to yeah. pressure. Oh yeah. yeah, there's pile of deer coming I in bet. there. Um, you know, but. Regardless, there's, there's piles of deer. So I think off of, you know, that almost a thousand acre track, we're going to try to take 10 or 15 does. Yep. That'd be awesome. Um, and there's, I don't know, 10 guys coming out. And so some are with kids, young, you know, young yeah, kids. Yeah, muzzleloader and, stuff, so. and bow, right? I mean, yeah, I think yeah. so. I'll have my bow, but yeah. whatever those, most of them have muzzleloaders, I think. Yep. So my concern is shed bucks first and foremost i don't want i've heard quite a i mean obviously i saw that one in kentucky but i mean i've heard a lot of people talking about deer shed out already. they are i've got pictures of one too so Do you? yep wow I, most of them seem like they're still holding but yep. uh, you know there are a few and so like it, I, we're gonna obviously have a briefing first if that does happen that's it. I'm, I'm we'll move we'll move it we'll still do it it'll be earlier in the year or something mm-hmm. but i just we can't we can't do that um, but hopefully we're successful with, you know, I'd love to kill 10 or 15 does off of that entire place. Um, Got like a snowstorm coming in too, which who knows what that's going to do. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited about, uh, so if we haven't talked about it, Easton is a partner of ours yeah. a, as of recently. Yep. Um, we, we've been working on that for some time. They're, you know, loosely affiliated with our, our Hoyt rep and stuff. And yep. so it's an awesome company. We'll get more into talking about some of those specific products We've and stuff. We've got arrows in for builds and stuff. So that's why I thought of it is I've got my arrows cut up and all mm-hmm. built. So I've got, uh, I, I'm shooting the East End. Um, is it the Parallel Pro or is that, that's what you're shooting? No, I'm shooting the Axis okay. 5 mils. I'm shooting the Parallel Pro 4 millimeters. Yes. 300 grains. Yep. It's a carbon interior. Uh, sorry. Uh, 300 spine. It's an aluminum interior, mm-hmm. carbon exterior, 300 mm-hmm. spine. So the aluminum inside of the carbon ensures perfect straightness. They can literally straighten these arrows. Mm-hmm. Um, so I know they're perfectly straight. The other thing about Easton is it's the only arrow manufacturer. So every other arrow that you guys will, will shoot, you know, whether it's a, a Black Eagle or a Victory, or a, which we'd shot previously, mm-hmm. all of them run down the Less Carbon Express. They all have a seam. Yep. Right. So the manufacturing process has, you know, there's a weak point on that arrow. That's why you look for your flex, you know, or you're supposed to when you're testing. Well, and you don't even have to look for it. Most of them expose the weakness. They have an arrow. Arrows on it. There's arrows on the arrow that say, here's the spine. Here's the spine. So that you can spine a line and and do whatever you want with that. But so Easton doesn't have that. It's it's the only arrow manufacturing process. They're made here in the United States. That there is no seam. Yep. It, it's a perf- It's a perfect arrow by all indications. Um, so that was a big reason for the for the change there, and uh, some of their arrow components that work, you know, with their sp- specific tolerances and stuff are really nice as well. So mm-hmm. that's what I'm shooting. I've, yeah, I've, I've got the whole hit system on my new one. Which, that's right. Yeah, that's right. So I've got mine all built out, and I uh, we did this kind of strategically. Is I wanted to build those arrows out as close to my old setup as I could, mm-hmm. just for yeah, because of our tapes and a, stuff, a base point to start at. So. <clears throat> So when I cut my arrows and I put in my, I believe it's a 55 grain um, mm-hmm. stainless steel insert yep. um, with a 125 grain broadhead, which I had been shooting previously. So it's the savers are the heads yep. that we're shooting. Came out to 475 grains. And where were you before? 500. Okay. Okay. Yep. Which is awesome because that gave me the opportunity now to bump up and I'm going to shoot the 150 grain saver. Mm. So it's a crossbow. One, it's a right? crossbow. Yeah. It's a crossbow. Like, that's what they claim. That's it's the only crossbow component you're ever touching in your and life. And the only difference is, like, I, I believe it takes a little bit more it's energy. It's the kinetic energy for open To open it. But I've messed with them, and I mean, it's, I'm not going to have a problem. <laughs> that's a substantial freaking... So, so, pretty soon here, and I won't have the RX-8s, but we just, we just yep. ordered some of ours the other day. But so, so, for this Doe Fest, I'll have my new 500 grain total arrow setup with the 150 grain yep. schwacker. Yep. Forgive me, sever. Yep. 150 grain sever at the front of it. 500 grain total setup. Um, ready to wax some does. So that'll be awesome. It wouldn't be a schwacker. I won't shoot those. No, <laughs> no. We've seen what those do before. So we've got RX eights coming. We're shooting sevens now. I need to sell my five. So if anybody wants to buy, me too. 
Do you have an RX five? For I'm going to sell a five as well. Yep. Yeah. So Jared and I both have RX fives for sale effectively now if yep. you're interested dm us on that yep. um mine's okay. 80 pounds is the only reason I, i've got several friends i think here. we're selling them full set up too like yeah. hha's on them and everything qed QADs. drop away i mean it's a it's a ready to shoot all the stabilizers would be on it super ready it, to go it costs you a fortune and we'll give you a good deal on it yeah definitely um so yeah we're basically using it to pay for our pro staff pricing on our rx8s mm-hmm. so um so yeah if you're looking for bow reach out. We've got some RX fives that are really in good shape to, to sell on that side. Um, we've got Easton, we've got Sever now. We are uh, to that point. Uh, if you're listening to this, we are in St. Louis at ATA this week. So if you see us say hi. Yeah, absolutely. Just grab us. Yeah. Say hi. We'll be there Wednesday night, Thursday, and some of Friday morning before we fly back out. Mm -hmm. And this will drop before then. So that's we're we're caught back up now. (laughs) So we're, yeah, the whole sense of this this podcast has been kind of I know all over the place here, but we're yeah we would just we haven't done one for us to talk about since like I, I don't know Kansas. Yeah, this I think. is just us kind of reconvening after you know we have a long stint here of really good guests. Uh, we've got some more to come here mm-hmm. uh, pretty soon. I believe Troy Pottinger is going to be the next one, whether that's yeah. tonight or in the next couple of days. So um, that'd be awesome. But in the meantime, I think this was some important stuff that we just wanted to catch up with yep. t- together and with you guys. Set the and, table uh, for 24. I mean, before we know it, we'll be talking. I bought a farm and farm management and all kinds of stuff. I got a lot of stuff going on there. Uh, we all do. Dude. I mean, here's some things we have to look forward to, you know, and I'm going to miss some for sure. You bought a drone. You bought a thermal drone. I did. I bought a thermal okay, drone. <laughs> so, so Jeremy's got a thermal drone. I haven't drone. been flying it in Pennsylvania, thus I'm not arrested yet. So maybe we have some fun stuff happening with that. That'd be cool. Soon. Yeah. That'd be fun. Um, we're going to draw Iowa tags next year ah. by all indications. It seems like, uh, zone four and five, the two that we're looking at, yep. uh, I, I think we're going to be okay from an we EHT some standpoint. So we need to yeah. start taking a close look and get boots on the ground here sooner than later to figure out where we're going to be for that. Also likely going to draw North Dakota. We'll be in North Dakota as well. And, uh, for Muley's September opening day, whatever that ends up falling Sixth, on, I think. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff and happening home farms, for yeah. this coming year. Oh yeah, in Illinois. So yeah, we <laughs> yeah we got Illinois. So we need to get back out to Illinois. You know, look at uh, some CRP management. How we're going to do that? Uh, potentially looking at some timber stuff. Food plots need to go on this year. Got to yeah. I mean, I've got well, there. I'll probably in the next three to four weeks, they'll be done timber in my place. Mm-hmm. Um, it looks so different. It's crazy to yep. do it. But there, Madison and I were out there a couple weeks ago, <clears throat> and I've got um, starting on. Monday, Monday or Tuesday, I've got four and a half acres of new plots going in. Cool. Um, so I've got four different plots going in, cut one two acre, one acre and a half, and then a couple like 0. 0.6 mm-hmm. um, going in on some of the new areas. So, I mean, that'll that'll basically double the food I have on that property. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. plus all the browse and stuff that's going to be cranking from the from the timber cut. So, yep. um yeah, I mean, that's kind of where we're at. I mean, it's kind of the the tipping point here of like, you know, I would love to close it out. I mean, uh, uh, hopefully we kill I'm, this weekend. I if my dad and Harlan kill something, I'd be would be stoked. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna take. I busted out because uh, we got one week next week left in Pennsylvania. So if you're listening to this, this is the last week of Pennsylvania before we go to ATA show. I'm gonna try to get my flintlock out um, to shoot a doe or something. Yeah, just old school. So I've got my longbow. I've been shooting my longbow, actually. I'm shooting 200 grain, uh, old, like, Barry Wenzel size, odd heads on that thing, and it's freaking awesome. You didn't kill a deer with that this year, did I you? Haven't, I haven't taken it hunting yet. Okay. I've taken my recurve out. Mm-hmm. I haven't taken that longbow out yet. I've just kind of been practicing, and mm-hmm. it's, I mean, your effectiveness is 15 and in, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, but I might, that might be a good Ohio, like, January type thing to take out early February. So Very cool. But yeah, man, it's it's crazy to think like it feels like just yesterday we we're talking about the season firing up and here it is wrapping up. Um, you know, we got sheds hitting the ground already. So um yeah, it'll it'll come around fast, but hopefully if you're listening to this, we'll three years in, dude. I, and I'll say this too. I think confidently by the time this drops, we will have had thirty thousand follower subscribers on YouTube. It's crazy. Which is cool. <laughs> it, it, not that we're like ride or die by the numbers, but it is fun to see that achievement. And it's like, man, people you know, pe- people you are on board. You guys really like us. Well, most of you. <laughs> or really hate us. Just, just subscribe anyway. <laughs> Either one, yeah. Well, hopefully we see a bunch of guys at, at ATA. Um, we are going to try. We can't make it probably any promises, but like <laughs> there's been talk of a few different shows and stuff. Yeah. And so like, 
you know, one is, uh, you know, uh, Cody and the Lone Wolf Custom Gear stuff. They do the, the road show. Yeah, the Mobile Hunter road show. We'd, I know just because of the people that will be, we'd love to attend that. Uh, in, the one in Iowa would be awesome. Sure. You know, but how that falls with the North Dakota hunt. And there's one here in Philly that we could try to do too. Um, there's an event up north that, that New York. Uh, yeah, Hunt Stock. The Hunt Stock deal. That mm-hmm. sounds like they're doing an awesome job with that. It's, it's just kind of far and it's. Nebraska planting season, so I mean, we mm. got to see if uh, we can make that happen. But I know I'll stumble around a day out at Great Great American Outdoor Show in Will Harrisburg. You? Yep, okay. I'm just go out for maybe a day or two. Who are you going? With? What are you going for? Um, I probably have a couple clients out there on the marketing side, but the I clients. figure just I don't know, be cool to walk around and okay. see people. All right. Well, and there's others too <laughs> that we've talked about going to in the past, like the the Big Buck Classic class. or the Deer the Deer Classic yeah. and stuff. There's you know there's shows that we'd love to just be at to just just engage with people. But mm-hmm. well, that's why I'm hoping. Like you know, I know we talked about it with Bracket a little bit, and I know ATA isn't what it used to be, but um, you know, it'd be encouraging to see some of you guys there this week, and you know, just have some cool conversations, and you know, seeing products, and kind of hit the reset button and start the year all over again. You know, that's usually what happens is that that ATA show is like our kickoff to like, here, here comes the new year. Start all over again. I've got some burning in February. Mm. We can, so at some point we'll, you know, we'll have Craig and uh, mm-hmm. Sturgis and stuff back on. We'll talk about, I, we burned 25 acres of stuff last year, you know, Turned cool season awesome. grasses and it's, it's awesome. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I'm excited to share some results. Just let it go. Boy, has it gone. I yeah. mean, it's, yeah. I mean, dude, I, wait till you see it in Significant person. Significant cover. I've got some areas that are six, seven foot tall. Like, <laughs> and it'd be interesting to see what happens this year. I bet you start to get some more woody brows in there in the next year or two. Mm-hmm. You know, some of the, like, just blackberry and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty so, cool. all those farm projects are ahead. And, I mean, it's, yeah, kind of starts all over again. And it's hard to believe we've been doing this for three years. Haven't missed the week. Don't plan on it. Yeah. So. Might be at risk tonight, but we'll, we'll see. Yeah, we'll figure it <laughs> we'll out. We'll get it figured out. We'll figure it out. So, Cool. Well, we appreciate everybody listening to episode 164, which is Jared and I. Um, you know, a lot of lot of catching up there and talking, and uh, we hope that you guys stick with us for the, the new year here in 2024, and we look forward to walking through it step-by-step step with you guys, and we'll, we'll see you all next week. Later. It's take me over.